All right, Dave, we're here in Florence, Alabama, the site of the Division II title game between Grand Valley State of Allendale, Michigan against University of North Dakota from Grand Forks, North Dakota. I'm Mark Jones along with Todd Christensen, Dave Ryan down at the sidelines. North Dakota received the opening kickoff. This is the ninth play of their opening drive, eighth play actually, with 11.28 to play in the first period. Zeros on the scoreboard, third down and 10. Into the end zone and incomplete. Intended for Schlusner. And in comes the field goal unit for the University of North Dakota. The Fighting Sioux come into the game with a record of 13-1 and one overall. That's their head coach, Dale Lennon, in his third year. Two years ago went 9-2, and two. last year 8-3, and 10-1 in the regular season this year. Overall, he is 30-6. and six. Now Cameron Paterka comes on 23 for 35 this year. That's an awful lot of field goal attempts, particularly impressive beyond 50 yards. But in between, not quite as accurate. 7 for 16 between 20 and 40, Mark. Todd, this one coming from 36 yards out. And he knocks it through. They failed to get the touchdown down near the red zone, but a pretty impressive opening drive nonetheless by Coach Lennon's team on the opening drive of the ball game. Well, one of the things that they did effectively is they got the ball on the ground and they were moving it. A couple of throws over the middle. Nice play by their graph getting to the outside and getting the extra yardage. But the key for them is going to be the offensive line. The big people up front, North Dakota, despite being a Division II team, is a group that averages nearly 300 pounds per man. And ultimately, what's, uh, what Coach Lennon wants to do is he wants to wear down the Lakers over the course of time during the four quarters of this ballgame, Mark. This is the first ever meeting and first ever meeting in the championship game between these two teams. Grand Valley State incredibly coming into this game with a 13-0 record, Todd. They've won 19 consecutive games dating back to last season. These two teams, four weeks ago, began their playoff and championship drives, respectively, doing it via different methods. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm anxious to see Grand Valley's offense in their regular season mark. They average 600 yards <laughs> a game. It's unbelievable in 58 points. On the other side, of course, North Dakota is famous for their defense. They finally put behind them the specter of North Dakota State five times national champions at Division II, and they have really put together defense, as you can see right there. So you've got a case here in this game of the irresistible force and the immovable object. Classic matchup between the two teams. Of course, uh, Grand Valley State, number one in total offense in NCAA Division II, and they will start off their opening drive of the ball game on their own 20-yard line. Now, a late change in the starting lineup, Todd Wojciechowski, will be their starting quarterback. He's a redshirt freshman, improved during the course of the week in practice. Of course, they're not playing with one of the key cogs in their offense. We'll get to that a little bit later, but he's completing 62% of his throws. And of course, in their backs and receivers, Reggie Spearman has been a key for them. Back-to-back 100-yard -back games because Grand Valley State, with the injury to Ains, has been forced to rely more on the ground game. Reggie Spearman is the lone back on first and 10. Wojciechowski completes his first pass of the game. Riondo making the tackle on the play. Here's a look at the offensive line up front. Now, they've turned out two NFL prospects and players in the last five years. Not bad. And, of course, both tackles, they think, have that ability. And, of course, up front for North Dakota. Look for Casey Blue in the middle to have a game. He has to play well for them. He cannot allow Spearman 100 yards in this one. Coach Lennon's defense will have to deal with a very up-tempo, prolific, no-huddle offense. They like to speed things up. Sometimes a little bit too fast. Mike, Flags down in the field. Mike Wilford, you had just mentioned, offensive tackle. One of those pro prospects is the guy who moved. Cuddle Nicky, O'Neill, Irvin, and Schmidt, the linebackers for North Dakota. And in the secondary, take a look at the two corners who have combined. Dustin Thornburg has nine interceptions on the season. The secondary as a whole, 20, 26 interceptions. Very impressive. Yeah, and the other side, Riondo with seven picks to his credit. Coach Lennon in his third year as head coach. Former UND D coordinator. Defense his stamp. The pass incomplete and no flags on the play. We mentioned and, and, that they're playing without one of their key players. And let's go downstairs to Dave Ryan for more. That's right, Mark. Todd mentioned it a moment ago. Kurt Ains is here, the record-setting quarterback in Division II. Runner-up for the Harlan Hill Award as the best player in Division II. 
Kurt, three weeks ago against Bloomsburg of Pennsylvania, the D2 playoff opener. Kurt, how tough is it for you to watch this one from the sideline? Uh, just being a competitor and, uh, you know, just being down here, it's, it's tough to watch. But, um, you know, I'm just thankful that my team's down here. And this whole experience has been is, it's just been great. And it's been my pleasure to be down here. And uh, the Southern hospitality thing is really working out for us. Mark, we'll hear more from Kurt after this play. All right, Dave, third down and 12. Wojciechowski going up top. Incomplete, barely off the fingertips of David Kirkus, and let's go back to Dave downstairs. So earlier today, you had a chance to throw the football around a little bit. I'm sure that was nice because you haven't had a chance to be on the field after the torn PCL and the dislocated knee, which is going to take eight months to rehab. Also got to do the coin flip. How did it feel to be involved that way? Uh, it's, it's just an honor. My team uh, honored me by naming me the game captain, and uh, I was able to walk out there, and I threw my crutches down, and uh, it, it's just a great feeling just being down here, and uh, hopefully we can pull off a win here. Guys, surgery January 2nd for him, maybe 10 months of rehab. He hopes to be back next season. Uh, that would be good news for Grand Valley State. Meanwhile, Pat Williams punting, averaging a little over 39 yards per punt. Not a great effort here coming down at the 44-yard line. So the Fighting Sioux back on the field with the ball, working with the shorter field this time out after that 26-yard punt. We'll be back to the D2 title game right after this. Passers in postseason touchdown passes with 11 coming into the ball game. And the man that just caught the ball number 81 Dan Graff is the fastest player on the team. 4-3-5, 4-4-1 or 4-5-2 depending upon who you listen to but more <laughs> importantly coming into this game 71 receptions with a dozen touchdowns. Wow, their all time receiving leader first down and 10 after that catch. Ball in the 34 yard line. Using a lot of the play clock that time. Perkarevich running it into the boundary. Pushed out of bounds at the 32-yard line that time by Terry Foster. Let's take a look at the offensive line. Size and athleticism paramount out front for them. Six foot seven, 315 pound. Matt Knutson is a guy to look at at left tackle for North Dakota. He is their road grader and somebody that they genuinely believe can play at the next level on Sunday. These four guys are going to be really physically challenged today. Fatigue might become a factor, Todd. Well, Shad Risk doesn't seem to bother him too much, at least over the course of the season. 20 tackles for loss and 11 sacks. Fosterman so far, 3 of 6 passing for 47 yards. Second down and 9. Out of the backfield, complete to Graff, brought down immediately by Foster. Again, his second consecutive tackle at the 30-yard line. The linebackers, Cole, Lindsey, and Foster. Good tacklers all. Each one of them had 11 tackles last week, and in the secondary, both Smith and Barnes are going to be challenged by Graf on the outside. Their base coverage, uh, man coverage changed it, and uh, we'll mix in a little bit of zone as well. Oddly enough, Scott Mackey, the strong safety, leads him in interceptions, and rarely does that happen, yeah. Mark. Third down and six. Incomplete. Perkarevich had a handle and then lost it. And it'll be fourth down. They're just on the fringe of field goal territory. Well, remember, this is Paterka now. It, it, here's a situation where this the t is a little bit disjointed. He needed to get him the ball a little bit quicker. And yes, Pekarevich could have had it. But as a result, they've got the great leg. I think this is a big advantage for North Dakota, and that's in their field goal kicker. Paterka has kicked one this year, Mark, 59 yards, whereas the longest for Grand Valley State has been only 31. Wow, and that 59-yarder, Todd, was outdoors on a wet, slick field. This one coming from inside 50 yards, 47. And unlike the first attempt, this one a little bit wide. So Grand Valley State University will have the ball when we come back. Wojciechowski with a chance to do his thing. We'll be right back. The NCAA Division II Football Championship is brought to you by Pentax Corporation. Reliable gear for your adventures. Welcome back to Brawley Stadium here in Florence, Alabama. I'm Mark Jones along with Todd Christensen and Dave Ryan. North Dakota with a 3-0 lead in the Division II Championship game. First and 10 for Grand Valley. And that's Lesniak. Let's go back to Brian Kenny in the studio. 
Mark, the 1AA quarterfinals underway. Number one, Montana taking on Sam Houston State. Here's Yo Humphrey for Montana in easily, and it's 7-0 Montana. Later, though, Sam Houston State coming back. Josh McCowan will keep it. It's all tied up 7-7. The winner here will take on the main Northern Iowa winner, Mark. Yo Humphrey, my new favorite name in college football, Todd. <laughs> Second down. Wojciechowski incomplete, intended for David Kirkus, number 80. Threw it behind him. A couple of quick facts regarding our respective schools. Allendale, Michigan, the site of Grand Valley State. About 18,000 students there, full and part-time. The Lakers, maybe the only team in sports that should be named the Lakers, yeah. looking at where they're approximated. Good point. Yeah, L.A. should have given that up when they transferred, <laughs> right, from Minneapolis? Yeah. Absolutely. Third down and nine for Brian Kelly's team. The Sioux coming on a blitz. Nice catch. Surface with a catch at the 48-yard line for the first down. That's why they call him Circus Kirkus, Todd. Well, you know what? The, the numbers that this young man has put up are absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's just astounding. But the thing is, is that on this wet field, to be able to come up with a hands catch like this in the middle of the field is just tremendous. This young man and what he has done this year has been unbelievable. 32 touchdowns. I got to tell you, when I first saw that statistic, <laughs> I genuinely thought it was a misprint. He has 32 touchdown receptions. Breaking the Division II records of Jerry Rice and Troy Edwards fumble they recover it but they'll lose some yardage back to the 41 yard line for Stofferson making the stop on the play but back to the very impressive numbers by David Kirkus well at six foot three 185 pounds you would have anticipated that he would have got a couple of looks at division one schools and indeed he did a couple Duke and Army but coming out of high school mark he was only 155 pounds well I'm sure a lot of those schools regret that now as you see the numbers that he has put up just absolutely astounding his seasonal number, 77 catches, 1,624 wow. yards, 32 touchdowns. That's just amazing. He says just to be mentioned in the same breath as Jerry Rice is great because he idolized Rice growing up. And he makes a Rice-like grab right there. Another first down at the 39-yard line. He was working on Dustin Thornburg on the corner. Let's go downstairs to Dave Ryan. Yeah, guys, you notice he's wearing the number 80, as in Jerry Rice. He idolized Jerry Mark, as you said, not only for his heroics on the field, but great hands, fluent, rights, uh, fluent routes in his Hall of Fame type stats, but also because Jerry Rice came from a Division II school, Mississippi Valley State, where a player like Kirkus said, really shows hard work and talent can overcome just about anything, even playing at a small Division II program and being 150 pounds out of high school. Yeah, sure. First down in 10, and... He's only a junior. He's got another season left. Lesniak down to the 27-yard line. And Todd, now the offense for the Lakers gaining a little bit of rhythm. And it's a great move by Lesniak. He just completely fools Josh Christofferson. Eric Schmidt comes on the blitz and whacks Wojohowicz. But Lesniak looks like he's going to come back to the middle of the bubble. Instead, steps back to the outside, goes away from his friends, and gets the extra yardage. So many times you've watched this play. Watch as he comes to the right. You think he's going to come back to the middle. Now watch as he makes the move. What? Look out. Just drops the feet of Christofferson, gets to the outside, and Lesniak at 5'8", 185. He can scoot a little bit. Yeah, he's the uh, big playmaker. More of the speed back. Here he is again. Lesniak brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 28-yard line by Travis O'Neill. Lesniak didn't get a lot of carries in the last two playoff games because they played on a wet and muddy track and he's a guy that depends a lot Todd on cuts and changing directions. He does and Spearman's a little more powerful you mentioned O'Neal on the tackle Mark he was one of the guys that got fooled the last play and so he wanted his comeuppance to get in there and get Lesniak and he did indeed drop him for a loss of one. On this drive quarterback Wojciechowski is three of four passing for 48 yards second down and 11. Grand Valley State trailing three to nothing. Pass complete to Hibber, and Hibber weaving his way down to the 23-yard line before he's finally pushed out of bounds. Great blocking downfield by the wide receivers. It appeared that North Dakota had that play stuffed. And one of the things that has to happen here, Mark, I think just early on as I watch, unless the play is designated for somebody else, the quarterback only has eyes for number 80. I mean, they're looking at Kirkus all the time, and so North Dakota would be well served to double team him and now as you say Wojciechowski Brady into the ball game 
Third down and five. More of a running quarterback, and that's what he does. Getting the first down and then some. Brady down to the five. First down and goal for Grand Valley State. Finally brought down by O'Neal. Well, last week he rushed for over 100 yards, and really it would seem that it's a little bit predictable when he comes into the game. You know that he's going to run the ball, but he's so effective at it. There's nothing North Dakota can do. Gets all the way down to the five-yard line on the quarterback draw. Yeah, he's only thrown the ball 14 times. Actually started a lot of games this season at receiver. Meanwhile, first down and goal. Wojciechowski back in the ball game. Knows the ball at the five-yard line. Flag down, incomplete in the end zone. Intended for number 30, Mike Holloway, the fullback. But Cottle Nicky was in on the coverage, number 48 right there, may have been flagged. Now, just let me tell you something from a personal standpoint, Mark, and that's this. I'm so pleased to see that they actually called holding <laughs> where the tight end is concerned. I'm telling you, Mark, so many times, and we'll get the officials called. We have pass interference on the deep end. In the end zone, ball will be placed on the two-yard line. First down. Well, I'm not sure that couldn't have been defensive holding. You get a chance right here to the left of your screen. Great release, and Cottle Nicky has no choice but just to just to grab him. And as I say, there are so many times, as I speak from experience down near the goal line, they usually won't make that call. Here's Brady Todd back in the ball game. Touchdown, Grand Valley State. So Coach Brian Kelly mixing it up as he moved further down the field using both quarterback Ains on the sideline. Their number one QB watching his understudies do a prolific job. Well, it shows a lot of resilience on the part of the Grand Valley State team, and I say it from this vantage point as Brady gets over the goal line. North Dakota had really dominated the early going, essentially, with the three and out. It didn't look like the offense was terribly effective for Grand Valley, but after the missed field goal, they got a little spirit, and sure enough, mixing the run and the pass, they go 70 yards for the touchdown. And Sontag in for the extra point, knocks it through, and the Lakers who led the nation in D2 in scoring at 53 points per contest with their first points of the ball game. They lead 7-3. The Fighting Sioux with the ball when we come back. Well, I don't know if two heads are better than one, Todd, but sometimes two, those two can be almost as good as one, Kurt Ains. It's interesting, too, that these two young men, they're not used to being on camera. They don't quite know how to respond. All right, <laughs> enough. Uh, okay, hi. I don't know. All right, I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's Brady and Wojciechowski left to right. There's Ains, the quarterback that was injured three games ago in the first half of their first playoff game. Oh, sure, he wanders over when the camera's there. Come on, <laughs> Ains. Come on, man. Give him their moment in the sun. You had 49 touchdowns, for goodness sake. Come on. That was the 99th touchdown of the season for uh, Grand Valley State. That's, that's incredible. That's astounding. They come in 13-0 and overall. They haven't lost a game dating back to 19 appearances a season ago. They won 19 consecutive contests. And this is their chance at history. Graf at the three. Brought down at the 23 yard line by Josh Koppel. They're saying there's a late flag on the field now. Well, there was a late hit, you, you know, when you only get the opportunity so often, you're going to sprint in there and make a hit at the very end. And Ken Cavanaugh said, you know what, that's enough. That's very late. We're going to tack on 15 yards. Youngster was clear back at the 10-yard line, and the pileup had already been there, and he decided to jump on top. Take a look at the end of the play now. Graf comes running up the middle. It's good coverage on the part of Grand Valley State. Now watch from the right and bottom of your screen. He's already down, plays over. Here comes number 25. That's Ryan Rainwater, a reserve defense. I love to say that name. Ryan Rainwater, defensive back from Grand Blanc, Michigan. And you see that Brian Kelly not very happy with him, saying, yeah, be aggressive, but be smart. It's interesting. When you look at Kelly and how his personality is reflected in his team, they're very upbeat, very outgoing, very outspoken, very hyper as in stark contrast to North Dakota. They're coaching their players. This is the fullback, Blaze Larson. After a gain of about three, let's go back to the studio with Brian Kenny. Mark, and back to the 1AA quarterfinals. Montana, the number one seed, has won 16 straight at home. Tied up here with Sam Houston State, but John Edwards 
quarterback takes it himself, and it's now 14 to 7, Montana in the first quarter. Second down and six, Brian back here. Ball at the 41-yard line. Klosterman has a man incomplete through the arms of his backup tight end, Chad Mustard. Chad Mustard, they had exactly what they wanted, man-for-man -man covered, terrific athlete, former basketball player at North Dakota on the out and up. He's wide open. The ball goes right between the four and the five. That's a terrific throw, and unfortunately for Mustard, he couldn't hang on. As I say, it's surprising because this young man, terrific athlete, he finishes his eligibility in basketball, comes into the office of Coach Lennon and says, can I play a little bit? He says, sure. And his senior year, Mark, 16 points and eight rebounds a game. It's not like he was some reserve. Good athlete and showed his ability to get upfield a little bit too there, Todd. Third down and six. Smith in motion. Lakers came with a blitz, applying some pressure. It was Clarence Lindsey almost getting to the quarterback, Klosterman, and it's fourth down. On comes the punt team. To be, frank, to be frank with you, I just don't understand why they don't just continue to keep the ball on the ground. It was so effective in the first two drives, and now they're trying to miss things up. And in fairness to Chris Musman, offensive coordinator of North Dakota, Mustard did drop that ball. But again, they're putting an awful lot of pressure on the quarterback. Lindsey, the one that comes up the middle. Dale Lennon's team 0 for 3 in third down situation so far. This is Benton with the punt. Terrible Not a great kick. one. He shanks it. And it's out of bounds at the 39-yard line and another flag down on the field after that 20-yard punt. Our man wearing the white hat today, Ken Cavanaugh. See, they're debating this one. I think what they saw is they saw Kirkus come sprinting up and bump the guy even though the ball was going out of bounds. That's one going to go against the receiving team, the Lakers. And that's particularly strange when the ball hits the ground so early. You would think that everybody would stop blocking, but as it is, here are the North Dakota Quick Facts. Yeah, 16 degrees we mentioned, right, back in Grand <laughs> Forks. The Fighting Sioux playing in the North Central Conference. Let's go downstairs to Dave. All right, Mark, we're playing on PAT, Prescription Athletic Turk, here at uh, Brawley Stadium in Florence. That's a grass surface with a sand base below it. It's supposed to withstand six inches of rain. We're not getting that much today. It is wet. It is slick. Now, North Dakota has not played a grass game since October 27th. You might think that'd be a problem. But talk with Dan Graff, the receiver, prior to the game. He said, no worries. We worked inside of our Lara Center and Dave all week long. But they're not worried about the cuts they're going to make. They felt in pregame, two days of practice here in Florence, it wouldn't be a problem for them. All right, Dave, and uh, saw your uh, kicks. They're looking a little dirty. I hope you didn't wear your nice Italian leather shoes down there. Dustin Thornburg stride for stride with Kirkus. Of course, in fairness, with the ball been aired out a little bit more, you can see the frustration on his face. Hey, I had a shot at that, but Thornburg turns around and makes the play. Nasty track down there. And Dave Ryan, yes, Dave, uh, I like the footing you've gone with today. It works. In the air again and picked off this time. O'Neal with the interception. And the fighting Sioux with the first turnover of the ball game down to the 33-yard line of Grand Valley State. You know, it's interesting, Mark. There was, a, there was an interesting head fake by the quarterback. Wojciechowski thought that if he looked to his left, that somebody would be fooled him in throwing down the middle. Take a look. Watch the quarterback. Now watch. He's going to quickly look to his left. Now he comes back. O'Neal is not fooled. Running with him man for man. Does a great job of cutting in front of the receiver. Banks to make the interception, as you point out. Big turnover for North Dakota, who has struggled on offense the last two series. That pass intended for Terrence Banks, as you mentioned. And... Uh... Boy, this defense of North Dakota is stout. First down and 10 for the offense, though, at the 34. Perkarevich down to the 28-yard line. Interesting stat on that, Mark. That's now the 30th interception of the season for North Dakota. Very impressive in the secondary and up front. And right here, it is, again, at the risk of being redundant. This is what they need to do with the big bodies up front. They need to continue to run the ball, and there's nothing wrong, Mark, with getting four yards on first down. Yeah. 
315, 294, 293, 292, and 300 pounds across the front of the offensive line. Second down and six. Berkarevich, the lone back. Gets to the edge and brought down at the 25-yard line. A nice little chunk. And let's go back to the studio. Brian Kenny, what's up with Lehigh? We got Lehigh and Furman in at one of the other quarterfinals in one AA playoffs here. Lehigh coming in unbeaten, but here's Tarekio O'Neal, a seven-yard touchdown run, and Furman, he took it a pile of players. Furman takes a 34-10 lead, Mark. All right, and all these teams playing towards college football enthronement and enthronement. Kind of helps when you have a playoff sometimes, Todd. Gee, that's a novel thought. <laughs> Third down and two. Both these teams began their journey four weeks ago. Perkarevich has the first down. Brought down at the 14-yard line. Got a good block that time by Butler. Wasn't that easy last week for North Dakota? Had a tough game against UC Davis, 14-2. Meanwhile, Grand Valley State had a couple of late big defensive plays to move along 34-16. Seems odd to say that, though, but in the case of Grand Valley State, that 34 points mark was the second lowest total they had all year. Just it's couldn't amazing. put it together, huh? Perker Revitz now is getting it going, rushing six carries for 34 yards. Blaze Larson, the lone back here on first down and 10. So with two tight, tight ends and two wide outs, it's Larson right between the tackles. Down to the nine-yard line, pounding away with that 248 pounds. He reminds me a little bit, those of you that are hardcore football fans, will remember a running back for the Chicago Bears, the name of Robin Earl. He was six foot five, 250 pounds, and he didn't quite have the hands to be a tight end. And of course, I find it interesting at six five and 245. How can you call a fullback? How can his first name be Blaze? Come on, <laughs> what's wrong with That's that? That's a misnomer. Yeah. It is indeed. But they've been very excited of what he has done over the last couple of games averaging over six yards a carry. Second down and six. Graf split wide to the bottom of your screen. Lakers come with a blitz. They throw the fade. Incomplete. Intended for Graf. And that was an audible. Klosterman had what he wanted. He wanted he had Graf to the outside, and he had him for the touchdown, but he just overthrew it. The problem, of course, with that audible then, Mark, is one of the hardest places in the red zone, of course, is now you come up third and five, third and six, whereas if you'd have handed off, get, say, a three-yard gain, third and two is a lot more makeable. Right. He has last missed the last four passing attempts, Klosterman has. He's four of 11 today for 50 yards. Third down and six as the rain begins to come down in earnest. Larson bottled up and then escapes. Gets the first down, but there's a flag down back at the 11-yard line, so hold up. That's the operative word, hold up is right. One of the offensive linemen held up somebody, and that's going to move <laughs> back 10 yards. Interesting. Interesting to see Blaze Larson cut to the outside. He's pretty much somebody who should be inside the tackles. Right here, there's the holding. You can see the grab on, and as a result, that afforded Larson to get to the outside. And you know what's frustrating about that in particular? I think for the offensive lineman there, who I believe it was Max Schneider, is the fact that the play was past him. Mm -hmm. And you see that all the time. You no see deal. that on punt returns. You know, a guy gets hit blocked in the back about 10 yards downfield. Third and 16 now back at the 21-yard line. Larson again in the backfield. Klosterman, incomplete intended for Graf, and it'll be fourth down. And in comes the field goal unit for North Dakota. What has happened as a result of Mustard dropping that ball, he doesn't, maybe it doesn't necessarily trust his tight ends as he did before. Watch the middle of the field right here on the outside, rather. Watch the outside, both Mustard and Kivik. You're going to see, look at that, wide open. Wow. Wide open in the middle of the field. He could have had him, but again, he only had eyes for Graf in that instance. Paterka in for another field goal attempt. He is one of two today. This one coming from 38 yards out. 
I think somebody got a piece of that, Mark. May have. That was weird. Comes up short on such a short attempt for him anyway from 38. Oh, I've never seen a ball get hit. Might have hit it a little fat like a golf club. <laughs> no, no, it, it looked that way. It looked like it. Let's see now. Now watch the trajectory of the ball and see if anybody gets a piece of this. It looked like, no, no, he did. He just shanked it. That looks so bizarre the way that came off his foot. And hence the reason why, as we pointed out, the kid does have a great leg, but he just hasn't been altogether accurate inside the 40. One of three today. First down and 10 now for the Lakers. Wojciechowski in a quarterback hands it off. And Spearman is tackled at the 24-yard line. Holy cow. Did they miss that? Spearman had his face mask tugged, and he's looking around for the amber linen, but it didn't come about. Spearman, the team's leading rusher, five and a half yards per carry. See how, uh, watch, as he cuts, watch as he cuts to the inside, watch his head get pulled back right there, yank. Wow. Ouch. Boy, that's, that's blatant. Ben Dixon, that should have been a 15-yarder. I don't know what the officials are looking at. Second down and seven. Fighting Sue, get away with one. Wojciechowski to pass. Incomplete and a flag down near midfield. Well, they got holding on the other end, and that definitely is not interference, and that's unfortunate. Kirkus is, Kirkus is applauding his case, but the referee has holding, so they'll nullify each other, and they'll do it all over again. And you can see the rain really beginning to come down now. Who do the elements favor, do you think, Todd, if it does at all? Oh, I think it has to favor North Dakota simply because of the fact that North Dakota is, is a power-oriented team whereas Grand Valley is dependent upon being fast. They're a little more finesse-oriented. I think certainly it favors the green and white. Grand Valley played two of their three playoff games so far in these kind of conditions in the rain. I thought it is interesting. The head coach, as you look at Dale Lennon, the rain is coming down. It's a little bit misty outside, and the guy's in short sleeves. You know that? On the offense, pass interference, on the defense, they offset. We'll put it down over. Well, there you go. Second down and seven once again. We're here in Florence, Alabama, under the raindrops. I'm Mark Jones along with Todd Christensen and Dave Ryan on the banks of the meandering Tennessee River. Second down and seven. It's Brady running the option, escapes, and then tackled at the 26. Connell Nicky making the tackle on the play. A lot of green shirts in the backfield, but they didn't get the tackle for loss, which I thought they were going to get. And now they come up with yet another third down conversion. As we see, this is what I was talking about. You mentioned the 16 degrees in Grand Forks. 16 degrees, that's nothing. So it's about 50-some and it's raining. And look, his coaches are all in short sleeves. Big deal. <laughs> Tough guys. Remember, it's the Bud Grant era. Remember how Bud Grant wouldn't yeah. let him wear the gloves that's and that? Right. Tough well, guys. The first 15 minutes of the 2001 Division II title game are in the books. Brian Kelly's team looking for their first title. They lead 7-3 in Florence, Alabama when we come back. I was afforded the opportunity yesterday to tour the lovely home, <coughs> the birthplace of Helen Keller in Tuscumbia, Alabama and the lovely and intelligent Ms. Catherine Sims showed me around as we got a chance to see everything ranging from where she was taught to where she slept and where she ate and to hear of the stories as to where she developed her speech. What a great opportunity. You know what, Mark? It's one of the blessings of traveling to college that we afforded opportunities like that to tour and to learn more about our nation and those wonderful individuals. And so right, Todd Keller, one of the first portraits in American courage First play of the second period, Grand Valley State. Lesniak on the option, out to the 35-yard line. Both these teams on our ESPN game track, as you'll note, making their first ever appearance in the title game. Both teams looking for their first, obviously, national title. Well, of course, that's what makes it exciting. As we saw early on, Paterka just cannot seem to find the range. He was one of three. But of course, the lone drive that Grand Valley State had had they able to get a touchdown as a result of the running of Brady. First down and 10 now. Lesniak 
Out to the 33-yard line, brought down by Tom Irvin on the play. Now, maybe I'm being simplistic here, Mark, but it seems to me that when Wojciechowski is in the game, they're, they're more inclined to throw. I think that's a given. And when Brady is in the game, that would seem to me to be the time to jam the 8-9 and nine in the box and force him to beat you with the throw. And the two quarterbacks, there's Brady on the sidelines. Brady more of the, uh, I guess some might say, outwardly confident slash cocky type. Second down and seven. Lesniak trying to get to the edge. Brought down for a loss, flagged down back at the 33-yard line. They're going to call holding in the backfield, and I think this is one where North Dakota is going to refuse and force them to come up with a third and 11, although because it was in the backfield, it could be like about a second and 22, but I think that uh, Dale Leno would be wise to let it go. Here comes the pulling guard, and right in front of the official, which is unwise, you can see right there. You don't want to do that. And the referee's looking at the play, and he's the one that makes the call. Scott Martin is the guilty culprit. Third down and ten. Let's go down to Dave. Mark, the two quarterback system very successful for Grand Valley State so far in this game. Ryan Brady was an option quarterback in high school. Led his chestening high team in Michigan to a state title in 1998. Guys, he told me last night he played in front of 33,000. Pontiac Silverdome, NFL Stadium. This does not intimidate him at all. Uh, as I mentioned, Dave, yeah, he is more of the outwardly confident one. Unintimidated, Wojciechowski puts it on the ground and pounces on the loose ball back to the 26. Scrambling around in the backfield. Finally, Eric Halverson is the one that catches up with him and strips him of the ball. Good coverage in the secondary by North Dakota, which was a concern for defensive coordinator Kyle Schweiger coming in the game. Now watch as he cuts back against the grain. You can see there's Halverson, strips him of the ball, and it bounces back, and Wojciechowski does the right thing, just fall on it. Don't try and pick up and make a play. Fourth down and 19. Williams looking for a better effort on this one than the first one. He got it. He responds in kind, a high spiral. Fair catch called back at the 32-yard line. A 42-yard punt. Graf calling for the fair catch. I'm Mark Jones along with Todd Christensen and Dave Ryan here for the Division II title game between the University of North Dakota and Grand Valley State University. It's seven to three under the rain and uh, the lone touchdown of the game scored by quarterback Ryan Brady and Grand Valley State was on its heels early defensively when North Dakota was running the ball with a lot of success. Yeah, that's exactly right. And to be candid with you, Mark, here in the second quarter, I know it's early, but I'm surprised it's only seven to three. I really thought there were gonna be a lot more points in this game. Perkovic on the pitch. Brought down at the 38-yard line. Got about five on the play. Clarence Lindsay making the tackle on the play. You mentioned the fact that not only is the offensive line big but athletic, they go with their version of the counter tray coming around. And eight of ten of the first down plays have been runs. And on those plays, each time it's been four yards or more. And if the rain continues to fall, that would seem to be the modus operandi. You've got to have a good mutter in the back of the fighting suit, yeah. Second down and four. And the Rebbits with seven rushing touchdowns on the season. Here he is again, right between the tackles. Anticipated being hit and fell down at the 44-yard line. Close to the first down. Very good point, Mark. That's very astute. He was anticipating getting hit because if he just runs straight up and down as he is in his stance, he might go the distance. Take a look right there. He thinks he's going to get hurt. Oh, man, just got tripped up. Otherwise, 37 might have gone all the way. You might be asking the question if you're at home, how come he hasn't been in in every series because he has such a great average per run? The reason is, is that earlier in the season, he had a high ankle sprain, and he is not 100%. And so that's the reason why they intersperse his playing time with Blaise Larson. First down and 10. Flags down, they'll get a free one. Here's Perkorevich again across midfield down to the 48-yard line. I think they're going to stay with the play, shoot. I'd rather come up second and two than first and five. And Perkorevich, boy, he's got some rhythm going. And if you're Perkorevich, so you go over to whoever the captain is and say, no, no, that's an eight-yard game. Don't take the penalty. Good for my stats. <laughs> we have offsides on the defense. 
That penalty is declined. We'll play second down. Let's go to Brian Kenny in the studio. Mark, back to the 1AA quarterfinals. Number one, Montana against Sam Houston State. Watch carefully. John Edwards here, the quarterback. Going to get this out to T.J. Okers. And he puts it in the air. A little trickeration to E2 Molden. Touchdown, 21-7 in the second quarter. And this now a final. Furman beats Lehigh. They advance to play Georgia Southern, defending champions. Right back here, second down and one, Brian. Nice play fake, he sold it, Graff broke it up. That's a great feeling. That is just a great feeling for Darren Smith for a couple of reasons. First of all, he wasn't supposed to start. He wasn't even supposed to start in that game, but Darren Smith is the young man who took the place of Jerome Knox stride for stride with the top receiver down the middle of the field with no safety help. Great job. Smith getting the late start today in place of Jerome Knox. Third down and one for North Dakota. Lots in motion. Flag down and Perkarevich down with the first down at the 46, but will it stand? Well, it appeared, I think that North Dakota was steady, so my guess is it'll be offsides again. And either way, they're going to get the first down. Folks, don't forget Saturday on ESPN2, BYU, the Cougars, will look to keep its undefeated season, Easy Todd, intact in Hawaii and raise its record to 13 and unblemished 13 and 0. Rainbow receiver Ashley. Leslie, Coach June Jones, who has recovered from a near-fatal car crash. What a great story that's been. And the offense of BYU led by Brandon Doman. Trying to recover from the loss of Luke Staley, Todd, who is done for the season, unfortunately, the dope walker with it, too. Well, it's going to be interesting because my understanding is, is that Reno Mahe, their great receiver, might have to play some tailback. And so that means that Doman is going to have to show his words. He's going to have to throw more than usual. And what a story it would be should BYU win and go to the Liberty Bowl undefeated. Of Val Hale fielding calls from attorneys across the nation. Perkarevich right between the tackles again. Nice chunk of four yards. Seemed like the same situation, the same play. They just go right up the middle. And again, only an ankle tackle saves him from going the distance. Watch at the point of attack right here. Pushing people down, cuts back against the green. Just barely getting a piece of it. I'll tell you what. That offensive line for North Dakota is really asserting itself early on. Red Valley State talked about the need to play good run defense today. So far surrendering 73 yards. The defense was seventh best against the rush in the nation this year. They come with a blitz. And incomplete. Tried to run the screen for Schlusner. And of course, the screen would have been perfect for the blitz, but Klausman just couldn't deliver. Good pressure on the part of Grand Valley State. And once again, a third down situation up to this point. They're only one of five on third down conversions. Brian Kelly's team coming in undefeated on the year, 13-0. They've won 19 consecutive games dating back to last season. I'm not sure in this situation, Mark, third down and five, you don't just run the ball. Because I'm thinking in the back of my head, this could be four down territory as well as we've been running. A little motion up front and contact as Knutson got nailed. We have a dead ball, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. Let's go downstairs to Dave. All right, Mark and Todd, thanks a lot. You notice Dale Lennon, the head coach of North Dakota, has a mustache. He's had that on since 1981. Now, he told some players in a guarantee after the team's win over Pittsburgh State of Kansas to begin these NCAA Division II playoffs. If they won the championship, he'd shave off the mustache. We'll have to hold him to that. <laughs> hey, I'd, I'd be checking for the razor and a little shaving cream right now if I were his players. Fossil has been struggling here, Mark. He's missed his last seven. Third down and ten. Looking up top. Incomplete. Broken up at the last minute intended for Smith. 
And once again, the Lakers secondary coming up with a nice play, closing quickly. Running at the last minute is Cottle Nicky, which is surprising. You don't think of a linebacker, but this is a great throw. It's right on the money. Cottle Nicky right at the last minute has his arm in there, but I got to tell you, that's a very catchable ball, Mark. Smith should have had it. What looked like thought a promising drive for North Dakota ends up in a punt now. Right through his arms. Couldn't quite hang on to it. Benton looking for a better effort than his first one. The bounce and be down at the eight yard line. In a surprisingly, what some would think anyway, low scoring game, Grand Valley State with just seven points after averaging over 53 a game on the season. They have the ball when we come back. The story of the season for Grand Valley State University, in a word, offense. Those are some very impressive numbers offensively. Number one in the nation in total offense and points per game time. It is impressive, and these are the regular season statistics. This does not in include the playoffs, but again, that just goes to show how strong North Dakota's defense has been, as you can see the numbers put up there, particularly that rushing one. That is a key defensive stat in any division. Speaking of rushing, Brady, the quarterback, running the ball out to the 13-yard line, getting about four. Let's go to Brian Kenny in the studio. Mark Moore in the uh, 1AA quarterfinals here, Maine and Northern Iowa. First, Griffith Jurgens scrambling, got himself some room, gets it to Ben Sanderson here for Northern Iowa. 57 yards on that pickup. Sets this up for five foot four Richard Carter. He goes into the end zone. Northern Iowa leads Maine 14 to 7. Right, Ryan, on second down and four. This is the worst starting field position of the day for Grand Valley State. A little shuffle pass and nowhere to go inside. Fooled no one. You mentioned the field position, Mark. Up to this point, Grand Valley State has been averaging their own 21, whereas North Dakota has been averaging their own 41. And of course, we see once again the great defense that North Dakota has put up. And if they could stuff Grand Valley here on this third down play, once again, they'd have great field position. Third down and four for Grand Valley State. The Lakers with the lead, seven to three. Lesniak on the fly. And I mean on the fly. Lesniak turning it loose with a first down out to the 41. Well, again, it was commented to us that this was their quick guy as opposed to Spearman. And coming into this game, Lesniak had been averaging 7.5 yards per carry. And he is their speedster. Cuts to the inside, does a great job coming off the tight end's block. And as you pointed out, now he heads to the outside. And really, it was a touchdown saving tackle on the part of Adam Stratton to get him out of bounds there at the 40. And just as important, Mark, especially in a game now where points would seem to be at a premium, got him out of some bad field position. So they did out to the 41. Wojciechowski underthrown and almost intercepted. Hey, did you see the kip at the end? That was pretty cool. <laughs> I like Jared's it. Jarrett's Banks. <laughs> the intended receiver, Todd. Well, remember, Mike O'Neill had an interception earlier, and this ball is underthrown. He gives it all he has to get it down the field. Take a look. O'Neill goes up. Banks does a nice job really playing defender at this point and making sure the kick almost at the end. Now, check this out. Bam! <laughs> I like it. I like, you know uh, what? Now, spin on your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Second down and 10. It must be fun to be young and resilient. Yeah. Way back when. Second down and 10. Brady keeps it out to the 45-yard line. It'll be third down at about six to go. You have to wonder how unsettling, if at all, for the two different quarterbacks to rotate in on every other play seemingly at this point. Well, again, you've got a situation where your star is out. That's all there is to it. You don't have your guy. You don't know who you're used to. I'm, I'm not a fan of the two quarterback system, but again, they're in the championship game, so you got to give them their due. And on third down, since things seem to have gone fairly well for them, they're four or six on third down conversions. Got to give Coach Kelly credit for taking.
Here's a situation to where Eric Schmidt, their star player, misses the opportunity for a sack in the backfield. He has him in his grasp, number 40 for North Dakota. Take a look. Here he comes on the blitz. He's got him. He's got him. He can't make the play. And as a result, Brady cuts back against the grain. You got people with their back turned anticipating a pass. Finally, at the end, he is dragged down by O'Neal. But once again, a big third down conversion for the Lakers. Spearman obviously has to have some fresh legs because Lesniak has been the guy over the last quarter and a half. And as we pointed out, Spearman over the last two games averaged over 100 yards per game in the last two playoff contests. <laughs> Second down and two. Stanford reverse. Banks. Still on his oh feet. Oh my gosh. What a tremendously athletic play, and he got the first down. Absorbed the hit time. I'm sitting here waiting to tell you what a great open field tackle that was by Riendo, and it said the guy's still on his feet. I thought he'd taken his legs out, and it sounded, you know, by the crowd's reaction, you thought the same thing. Stanford reverse, where the receiver comes around, cuts in front of the back. He has to take a little bit of a detour. Now watch Riendo. Bam, nice hit. He's dead. He isn't? Remember that play a couple of years ago with Randall Cunningham? Exactly. Remember that? Is that what you were thinking about? Yep. Same thing. When Banks came in and knocked Carl Banks, knocked him seemingly on his butt, and he got up and threw the ball to, to Jackie. Uh, just one point in his last name. We'll get it. Great tight end for Tampa Bay. Wojciechowski in the ball game. But Grand Valley State uses its first time out in the shadows of the goal line of North Dakota. Brian Kelly, the coach, looking to press the right button. They lead 7-3 when we come back. The Lakers over the Fighting Sioux, 7-3 with 6.47 to play in the first half. I'm Mark Jones along with Todd Christensen and Dave Ryan. And so far... Well, the trend of being broken in a big way right now, Todd. <laughs> yeah, that goes without saying. As far as scoring goes. If you would have told me this is going to be a, dis a defensive struggle, I would have told you you're nuts. First and ten, Wojciechowski in a quarterback. Looks one way and picked off. And this could be trouble for Grand Valley State. Mike O'Neill, the free safety, making the interception. His second of the game. There has to be a miscommunication here because he just he threw the ball right to it. I think that he, what he was anticipating was either a slant or a hitch. I mean, this is just right to O'Neal. It, it's a quick throw, three-step. Now he's waiting, and there's O'Neal in front of you right there. Is he going to sit down on the ball? He doesn't. I mean, O'Neal's just waiting on it. And frankly, I'm surprised he didn't go the distance. Watch the left of your screen. There's nothing but green shirts here. Nothing but green shirts. First down and 10 coming back the other way near midfield at the 49 for the University of North Dakota. But the Revit stopped up after a gain of about one. And that's one of the few times today that we have seen Perk Revich gets stuffed, as we see in the sidelines, are very unhappy. Brian Kelly said that Wojo had a very good week of practice, Todd. Picked up a lot of the intricacies and other things of the offense, and you see him being comforted right there, and said that, you know, I might get to a point where I feel comfortable with starting him, and he eventually did. Well, but once again, you know, he is a redshirt freshman, and he hasn't played at all this year, except in a mop-up role, so it's a tough, tough pill to swallow. Osterman keeps it himself, and he is rocked at the 44-yard line. That's an interesting call. In North what sense? Well, from this vantage point, and that is they're getting a little bit predictable at being in between the tackles and some of their plays. This time they decide, you know what, we're just going to go student body left, get my get my runners out in front of me and see what we can get. Remember, Klosterman got dinged last week against right. uh, UC Davis. And, Dings so much that he couldn't, he just couldn't throw in the fourth quarter. So really, they're taking a chance here with him. He actually came to the sidelines in that contest and told the coaches that, hey, I'm not comfortable putting it in the air. We better keep it on the ground. They are one of six in third down situations. Third and three. Perkorevich got the first down to the 39-yard line. And folks, don't forget tonight, 
The 2001 Heisman Trophy winner will be announced on ESPN, presented by Wednesdays at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Dorsey, Harrington, Crouch, Grossman. Who do you like, Tuck? Randall L. He's my <laughs> man, too. Frankly, that's my pick. But out of the four people that are there, my guess, I, I'd say Crouch. If you don't have a great individual year, I think it should be a career thing, and I think his career has been unbelievable. 35 and 6 as a starter speaks volumes. It does, and uh, big inspiration for his whole team. A flag on the play, and it came late after the whistle. You know, it just goes to show how powerful that offensive line is. When was the last time you saw a quarterback sneak go for four and a half yards? Clarence Lindsay was the player that came in a little bit late. Grand Valley State. I've always, I've always been interested in that when the official makes that call. He does the personal foul and he comes over, do you want to accept it or not? Is that, is that a no-brainer? <laughs> he just went to the captain. Then after the whistle, 15-yard penalty, first down. I, I, I guess my point is, it's been, if you ever see now, we're not yeah. interested, we refuse. It's okay. I like to put that knot on my head. <laughs> yeah. Forgive and forget. I'll turn the other way. First down and 10. Nose of the ball at the 20-yard line. This drive set up by an interception by O'Neal. He's combining for eight penalties today. Here's the same play coming the other way. Klosterman, pretty good runner down to the 12-yard line. But I'm telling you, this offensive line is getting out front and hitting some people. The guards are pulling and the tackles are hooking people. They're just doing a very good job. Take a look at the pull here. You get a chance to see coming out front Right tackle, that's number 78. That's Mike Bryant out front. Does a nice job of blocking. Seals the corner, and there's Perkarevich, who's also out front, putting down a pretty good block for Foster. Big guys move pretty well, Todd, up front. Huh? Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Second down and one for the fighting suit. Draft in motion. Perkarevich, nice tackle. Number four, Terry Foster brought him down right at the line of scrimmage. Terry Foster, 11 tackles last week against Catawba. Here's an outside linebacker who's 5'11 and 185 pounds. But he has two children. Want to say hello to them, Sheree and Terrence, if you're at home watching Pop. He's having a pretty good game. Doing his thing with a nice tackle on that play. And that's a bad decision on the part of Perker Ravage. He's got to stay with his friends. Don't cut to the outside and get away from the blockers. They've been so good to you up to this point. Third down and two. That's got to be motion. And the boy, is that costly for North Dakota. Their offensive line going so well, and both both the tailback and the wide receiver are leaning forward, and Dale Lennon knows it. Got a dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yards, repeat third down. Ninth penalty of the day between both teams. Take a, look, take a look at the bottom of your screen. I mean, you can't quite see the tailback just leaning just a little bit, getting off a little too quick. And really, there's no excuse for Graf in that situation, Mark, because it's a running play. You don't have to be in a big hurry to get downfield there, especially for a play going between the tackles. Puts them back into a third and seven. Approaching three minutes to play in the first half. Klosterman. Brought down for another loss, back at the 19-yard line, and it's fourth down and long for North Dakota. Dan Hosford is the one who gets in first, and again, they're going to try a field goal, and this has to be frustrating for the offense, and even if he does make the kick mark, it's frustrating because time and time again, Grand Valley State has been outstanding on third down and stuffing. What's interesting, coming into the game, all the talk was about the running game of North Dakota and the big offense of Grand Valley State. So far, the story of the game has been the Grand Valley State yep. defense. He's one of three today, and in the red zone, it hasn't happened. And he hooks another one. Paterka hooks another one. Came into the game 23 of 35 with a long of 59, but his head coach right now, Dale Lennon, trying to figure out exactly what has gone awry with his place kicker. We'll be back in a minute. Cameron Paterka, the great kicker for North Dakota, is not having a great day. Take a look at his face once he kicks it. He knows that he's hooked it. 
see the reaction on nuts. Now at the end of this, this makes no sense. You know, he starts to get a little yeah. trash talking from Clarence Lindsay, and look at this. Look at this, he pats him on the shoulder. And now I'm not saying that you have to go in and punch the guy or push him, but you know what, you don't want to take that. As you pointed out, reminded of the old Super Bowl, Super Bowl 10, I think it was, you know, the old Roy Girella so and Cliff Harris, Harris thing. Harris. Yeah. Before Jack Lambert came in and slammed him to the turf. Yep. Ryan Brady in a quarterback, first down and 10. Spearman alone back beside him. 2.20 to play in the first half. Spearman. Spearman with a first down out to the 35-yard line, tackled by Riondo. And just as we talked about the offensive line for North Dakota, Grand Valley creates a nice gap there for Spearman, particularly on the right side. Martin and Wilford are able to get some people off. Of course, now because of the effectiveness of the running of the quarterback, what that does to you up front is now you're a little bit hesitant just to chase after somebody else other than the quarterback. First down and 10. Brady getting the call from the sidelines. Kelly with a couple of uh, shields to hide the call on the sidelines as well. An option. Keeps it himself and brought down at the 36. Frankly, I'm surprised that Brady is in at this point for this reason. If they are going to run their two-minute offense, it would seem to me, Mark, that you'd want to have your thrower in there. Interesting. There's the thrower, Wojciechowski. Brady, meanwhile, a uh, guy who is directing the offense now in the first quarter. Well, they actually got a break there, Mark, because they changed footballs, and the clock stopped at 152, and clearly the clock should have been running, and I think this is the discussion that they're going to have right now is the clock should have been running at that point in time and it was not a big advantage for the Lakers if indeed they let it stand. And Todd, always an issue when it comes to no huddle teams. You see them, they want to get the ball in play quickly, get Please the official. Get the clock, the 134. Yeah. They want the official to place it on the ground within what, 18 seconds sure. or so? Sure. And get going, rev it up. Northwestern, of course, are the ones that are making this famous right now with this no huddle that they do in the Big Ten. Very similar to the offense at Grand Valley State runs. Terrence Banks went wide to the bottom of your screen on second down and nine. He goes towards Kirkus. And it's incomplete, underthrown. Every ball that Brady has thrown has been underthrown up to this point, Mark. Let's go downstairs today for more on Brady. Just an amazing story on Ryan Brady, guys. He was a 1998 star quarterback, as we said, at Chesaning High School in Michigan. And had not taken a snap at quarterback since then. He was a walk-on at Ohio University, left that school to try to play at Division II. He says he's always been a quarterback at heart, though, and paid attention very closely to what Kurt Ains and Todd Wojciechowski were doing in the quarterback meetings and during practice in case something came up he would be ready to go he feels very comfortable in this role he'd rather be a quarterback than a receiver guys well he's the man in charge of the offense now on third and nine flag down on the far side of the field now they're going to get a free play because north dakota started a little bit too quickly the game's got a real funky rhythm to it, Todd. A lot of penalties, I think. It does, but this is particularly frustrating for North Dakota, this offside penalty, for this reason, that finally on third down they had stopped them. Watch the top of your screen. Right here at the top. Watch the takeoff. Eric Schmidt got a little bit too much of a head start, and as a result, they're going to come back third and four. They are five of seven on third down today. Had kind of a false start there, right? Yeah. One of them out of blocks in the corner. <laughs> I'm Mark Jones along with Todd Christensen and Dave Ryan here at Brawley Stadium in Florence, Alabama. The Division II title at stake. Grand Valley State's Brady, the quarterback, sacked behind the line of scrimmage by Ben Dixon. Well, Dixon drops him. Now the decision is with North Dakota as to whether or not they'll be content to let it go, and it appears they're not. They're going to call timeout and give themselves a chance. North Dakota in the familiar position of playing in a low-scoring game like they did last week against UC Davis, winning 14-2. We'll be back in just a minute. Fourth down for Grand Valley State. The Lakers set to punt. Kevin Sontag in. And don't forget, coming up, that Sports Center in-game that's coming up next at halftime. Jeff Van Gundy storming out of practice yesterday, resigning today. College hoop scores and highlights and a Heisman preview. You didn't say who you wanted in the Heisman. You predicted. 
I'll, I'll tell you before we're done here. It might shock you a little bit. Bad kick. Another one. I mean, Sank. really bad. This is and not what the doctor ordered for this reason, not just because it was a bad kick and it sets him up at the 43-yard. Again, the snap was a little bit low, but punters are used to that. Look at the ball. The ball actually floated on him. He ended up kicking it kind of banana style. But not only that, because the shank punt goes out of bounds. Look at that. Only six seconds came off the clock. Plenty of time to get into field goal range, especially this guy's field goal range. Yeah, just a 19-yard effort. First down and 10. A four-receiver formation for the first time today. Graph in motion. Fosterman sacked back at the 34-yard line by Shad Risk. And Shad Risk is their guy. That's the guy that comes in and makes plays coming into the game. A dozen sacks, 20 tackles for loss. Six foot one, 255 pounder with the great lateral movement. I shared an elevator with him, by the way. He's not that He tall. used most of it, huh? <laughs> Second down and 19. Complete nice at midfield to number 84, Jesse Allers. And you would think, as you mentioned, how tough is it to get into the passing game at this point? Well, one of the things is that if you concentrate so wholly as North Dakota has on the running game, the rhythm of Klosterman isn't there, but you couldn't tell by that throw. Deep comeback, he put that one right on the money. And let's not forget, we mentioned this early, earlier, Paterka has kicked one from 59 yards. So another first down, and they have a shot at it. Chance maybe for redemption for him. He's just one of four today. His field goal attempts. Third down and three from midfield. Lost him with plenty of time. And an open field tackle at the 40. Gonna have to call six. timeout right now by Foster with two seconds remaining and uh, with no discernible wind down on the field. I'm not sure that he can make it from this part out. <laughs> no, you're We're right. Gonna, <laughs> we'll take a break and be right back. Good sportsmanship is the result of being taught the right way to deal with life. By your family, by your coaches, and by your team. NCAA football prepared me for life in so many different ways. We work together to accomplish our goals. NCAA football. Pass it on. The Lakers leading 7-3 with two seconds remaining in the first half. What appeared to cost him, and of course you have to be cognizant of the time, and he was, but he has he has Pekarowitz downfield in the middle, and instead he runs to the outside. Now watch, here's your blocker, turn around, now run with your blocker. Instead he cuts back to the outside, gets nailed there. If he follows Pekarowitz, he might be in field goal range right now, Mark. Instead, as you point out, because of the conditions in the rain, this is going to be either a Hail Mary or, or yeah. a hook and lateral or something like that. But, uh... We added it up to 62 yards, did we? Yeah, that's uh, that's the distance. First down and 10, but uh, clock at issue. You kick it or you throw it up? He's got the quarterback in there still. Well, here's part of the problem, and, and I did a game. Last year, I remember I did an overtime game with Wisconsin and Purdue. And Wisconsin decided, oh, I'll shoot. You know, we might as well try the field goal. It was about a 60-yarder. And of course, because of the low trajectory, Purdue comes in, blocks the field goal, uh, runs it back for a touchdown. So why would you want to do that here? Give it a shot. We've seen it a million times this year. The Hail Mary come through, so why not try it? You know, we were talking earlier about uh, some of the Heisman Trophy candidates. Uh, Randall L., one of your picks. I'm going to go, and you'll see the presentation tonight on ESPN, by the way, Ryan McKinney. He would be my pick, and here's why. Has not allowed a sack in his entire career at the University of Miami, allowing Ken Dorsey to throw that ball all day. Right. He held Dwight Freeney, the NCAA's all-time sack leader, to not a single tackle in their game. A little love for the offensive line. Interesting. Interesting. First down and 10. Osterman into the end zone, throwing it Graf's way. And it's batted down 
And that play symbolic of one of the themes of the first half here, the Laker defense. Phil Condon, the tight end, is the one that batted it down. Let's go downstairs to Dave. All right, Mark, thanks. Coach Kelly, you said during the week that your team losing Kurt Anis and how difficult that would be, kind of like blowing a tire and not an engine. The two-headed quarterback system works well for you. Why did it work so well in the first half? Well, you know, obviously we've got to pick our spots with it and find some things that we can do effectively. We're probing, trying to find some things that we can get. North Dakota's a heck of a football team. We had a good first half and finding some things. I think we can make a couple more things work for us in the second half. You know they're a larger team. They want to be more physical with you in the second half. How do you avoid that? Well, we can't. That's what they're going to do. They're going to keep coming after us, but uh, our kids are resilient. They'll keep playing hard, and we want to be close going into the fourth quarter. We think if we're close with them, we got some things that we can do to win this football game. 30 minutes in the first ever national title, guys. Thank you. All right, it is 7-3 at halftime. You know what? We expected, Brian Kenny, a lot of fast dancing at the club, but instead it's been slow, bump and grind so far. Back to you in the studio. Mark, yeah, thank you very much. I've been saying 60 points a game. We're not getting to 60 points a game here, Rodney. Now, if I'm North Dakota, I'm feeling pretty good about where I'm at right now. Defense really shedding down this high-powered offense. Rodney and I going over the 1AA playoffs. When we come back here, Sports Center in game, we've got very interesting basketball game with Illinois and Arkansas. And the Heisman Report as well. Chris Lee and Kirk are in New York City for the presentation. After 14 weeks of football, North Dakota and Grand Valley State playing for the championship. That's what's at stake today for these two crews who've come to Florence in search of college football's really ultimate prize in Division II. At halftime, the score is 7-3 Grand Valley State with the lead but far below the amount of points that they are used to scoring. And Todd Christensen, one of the themes in the first half, everyone talked about the Grand Valley State offense, but the defense has really done the job for them. Well, considering the fact that they had two turnovers, four different field goal attempts, and it seemed like that they resided almost exclusively at their end of the field, you got to give a lot of credit to that Grand Valley State defense for only giving up three points, and also the fact that they've only given up around 160 yards total offense as well, and we talked about North Dakota's defense. We need to pay homage to the Lakers. They're terrific there in the first half. Let's take a look at our ESPN game track. The running game a big increase in the number of yards in the second quarter as compared to the first. Well, of course, Mike O'Neill had those two interceptions, but in both cases, Paterka couldn't come through and kick field goals. And, of course, he was one for four in the first half, and that has to change because, really, at this point, I don't anticipate this turning into a scoring fest here in the second half. I mean, it really is going to be a defensive struggle. Unless they move the game indoors somehow. Yeah. Lakers receiving the kick. Banks. Got a block. Banks <laughs> weaving his way out to the 34-yard line after running about 55 yards. Let's go to Dave. Coach Dale Lennon, team, some uncharacteristic mistakes in the first half. Five penalties, 29 yards, and some drop passes. Was that a key to your halftime address? Well, it most definitely was. We don't feel we've really played Sioux football yet, especially offensively. We've had a lot of opportunities and just haven't taken advantage of it. And, uh, you know, the drop passes are a concern, missed field goals. Uh, you know, it's a situation where we're playing the type of game we want to be in. It's just now we got to start, start taking advantage of the opportunities we do have. Good luck on getting that first ever title. Thank you. All right, the drops. Chad Mustard dropping a big potential big play for North Dakota and a penalty on the first and play. This is, in, this is interesting, Mark, that right there at the 35-yard line, that was the best starting field position of the day for Grand Valley State, and now they move back five yards. Some telling things in the statistics. You would think that with that much of a margin and time of possession, it would be a big issue. And, of course, on the flip side, also the two turnovers. It has not been, which, again, bodes well for the defense of the Lakers, who have been outstanding. And, of course, now as a result of Brady at quarterback, they're actually out rushing the fighting. Soon. First down and 15. Brady hands it off to Lesniak, stopped up right near the line of scrimmage. Lesniak, the guy they're trying to uncork and untrack a little bit. He's the speedster. And Eric Schmidt is somebody whose name we thought we'd be calling a lot. He's the one that gets the tackle on that play. But every opportunity it seems that he's had, whether it be a quarterback or downfield, he hasn't quite been able to make the play. But as defensive corner Kyle Schweiger told me, this young man is relentless. He will play for the entire time. He does not take plays off. 
from Van Den, North Dakota. Great athlete, a former hurdle champion in track and field in high school. Second down and 16 for the Lakers. Wojciechowski at a quarterback. Wide open at the 38 is number 83, Hibbler. And once again, though, even though they do get the 13 yards, that's an excellent open field tackle by Riendo. I thought that he was going to get the first down because he had so much space. And he said number 25 comes up and drops him, and that forces another third down for the Lakers. All out at the 42-yard line as the coach continues to change his quarterbacks. Coach Kelly signaling him in plays. Mark, that's the most open we've seen a receiver all day. Yes, there is. Brady in a quarterback, put it on the ground. And this one imploded right from the snap, Todd. O'Neal made the tackle. And not what you want to do against North Dakota. You don't want to go three and out. O'Neal comes in to drop him, but of course that is, uh, what's the term in tennis? Unforced error. There you go. I believe on the part of Grand Valley State. And they're going to have to give the ball up. Pat Williams into punt, his fourth of the day. And by the way, it was Jimmy Giles. Oh, We've got a whole halftime question. <laughs> okay. tight end, my buddy Jimmy That's Giles. Right. See another one of those plays, hopefully, in the second half here on fourth down. Williams, nice punt. It's off his best one of the day so far. Down to the 15. That's Graff. Flag down back at the 24. Graff pushed out of bounds near midfield at the 50. A 45-yard punt, but this one's probably going to come back. Eric Schmidt is pleading his case there at the 28-yard line, but it is going to come back. They're going to call it a block on the back. It looked like it was awfully close. Watch number 40 on the bottom right corner of your screen and decide for yourself as to whether or not this is a clip. Right here at the end, that's not a clip. That's not a clip. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate on that call. But again, one of the things that I noticed, he did the basketball thing, Mark, and then as put he put his, put his hand, right, right, right. And so automatically, sometimes human nature tells you to make that call. Tough break for Dale Lennon from the Fighting Sioux. That's going to mark the ball back all the way just inside the 15. North Dakota last week scored only 14 points in its victory over UC Davis. And just as on the other end, the Lakers had their best field position of the game, this is the worst field position for the Fighting Sioux. Great drive in the second half for noted North Dakota. Krkorevich pushed out of bounds just beyond the 15 at the 16-yard line by Dustin Cole on the play. One thing that impresses me, Mark, about this Laker defense is this, is that despite the fact that they're not very big, they fly around and they hit. You know, normally because there isn't as big a crowd, I, I can hear it in my ear. I can hear the collisions of the pads. The youngsters are flying all over the place, particularly that linebacking core. I'm going to be honest with you, Todd. When you mention Laker defense, I expect to see Kobe Bryant down <laughs> yeah. in the stands somewhere. And Shaq clogging up the paint. <laughs> that did sound funny, didn't it? <laughs> Second down and eight. <laughs> the receiver Double screen. screen. Incomplete. Intended for number 89, Schlusner. It was blown up by James Barnes, number nine on the edge. And I'm not sure that Barnes wasn't there a little bit early. Seemed to me that he got there a little bit too soon, but the officials didn't see it. There he is, number nine. Look at that. He's dragging him down before the ball gets to him. That should have been a penalty. He got chopped down too almost, it seemed. Yep. You're probably asking for a little clarification or explanation from the official. Injured player down to the field, Dave Ryan will hopefully get us some information on that when we come back. Now, a few of you may have heard a little uh, partial verbal faux pas just moments ago. Mine, of course. And look at the logo. It looks strikingly familiar, Todd, to another school out there with a gold helmet. I'm trying to recall. Uh, Northern, Northern Denver. Northern, no. Uh, New, New, New Northern, Delaware. Northwest. Ah, okay. Notre Dame. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Team without a coach right now, I think. Third down and eight. For North Dakota. Posterman sacked back at the 10-yard line by Marshall and Risk. And it's interesting because we've talked about the offensive line and how effective they've been in the running game, but they have really struggled in pass protection. 
And we talk about risk. He's a tough one, 6'1", 255. One of the advantages of being a little bit shorter is that you do have some leverage underneath, and that's what he's able to do. Gets underneath the guard and makes the play. Well, high risk and high return on that play. Good investment for Grand Valley State. Three and out for the Laker defense. Benton with his third punt. Very returnable. Perkis still on his feet. Out of bounds at the 19-yard line. And let's go downstairs today. All right, Mark. Moments ago, Todd talking about Chad Riss making that big play. What a huge season he's had. Back in spring ball, when the new defensive line coach Jimmy Williams joined the staff, he laid out his game plan. He said it would take incredible commitment. First on the field, last off type mentality. Extra running for the defensive line to produce in the fall. And Chad Riss didn't really want to be part of that. He was on the verge of quitting the team. Didn't think he could withstand the physical strain of the intense conditioning. He was struggling in school. After an hour-long meeting with Coach Williams and head coach Brian Kelly, he decided to stick it out. And Grand Valley in the semifinal win had that huge couple sacks against Catawba last week. All parties happy he stayed at Allendale. Well, it seems like a long time ago now, on the verge of winning the title, with the lead right now, 7-3, with 11.30 to play in the third quarter. Irvin making the stop on Spearman. Well, we hadn't mentioned the name David Kirk as much, and we outlined at the top of the show those unbelievable stats that he had. But with Brady playing the bulk of the time at quarterback, he has not been afforded the opportunity to catch him. Only two catches for 39 yards, but clearly there, a huge play with that punt return. Setting him up in excellent field position. Second down and four. Brady faking the handoff, keeping it himself. Close to the first down at about the eight-yard line. And again, the offensive line asserting itself. One of the things that I've noticed about Brady, Mark, is he's very patient. There's a tendency when running quarterbacks have is they get the ball and they just want to take off. Yeah. He lets the play develop, and it seems like sometimes he's going a little bit slow. But in that case, goes with the fake, is behind the left guard, and gets the first down. They're going to bring the chains in and oh, take a closer look. Spoke it appears as if he has it. Uh, you know what? I shouldn't do that. All right. Spearman, meanwhile, needing just one more yard to reach the 2,000 plateau in his career. The junior, 5'10", 195 pounds. It's one of the impressive things about this Grand Valley State team as well. A number of people coming back. A lot of underclassmen on this team. He was quarterback Kurt Ames before the game. He really is looking forward to next year. Wants to get back to this spot. Of course, there are no guarantees. First down and goal. But 49 touchdown passes, there's no guarantees. <laughs> <laughs> they run the option into the boundary, and he is upended and comes down on his feet. Down to the five, Riendo making the tackle. Made a number of interesting tackles has Riendo. And I'm talking about the kind where he steps up and collides. Usually your corners are not your tackle guys. They're your cover people with a 5-foot, 1090-pounder from Grand Forks has come up and put the lick on a few people today. And as you pointed out, seven interceptions, and he does a lot with those interceptions. He's running back for over 220 yards. Yeah. He's a player. Return three for touchdowns. Second down and goal for the Lakers. Incomplete. Intended for number 80, Kirkus. I'm going to use a phrase that my father used to use when I was little. He said, that little scam. That's what he said. Riendo's out there on the six-foot-three Kirkus. This is what they didn't want. They're a little concerned that he couldn't do it. Watch him jump up. Now is he... Oh, boy. That could be considered face guarding. Didn't see him look back. He did not look back, but once again, he's with him stride for stride and give him credit. The more athletic number 80 could not come down with it. Third down and goal. Spearman alone back. They run the option into the boundary. Nowhere to go. Brought down by Kolatiki. And that's fourth and goal. And that's a great play by Kotelnicki. And this is why he had a man on him. He had a man on him being blocked. This has been their most effective play in terms of the option. He shakes him off, is able to tackle the quarterback. Now, folks, 
let's point out the fact that five for nine coming into this game is their kicker, Sontag, along of 31. So this is no guarantee by any stretch. Yeah, they've been so busy scoring touchdowns, right. he doesn't get a lot of field goal attempts. This one from 25 yards out. We have seen an abundance of procedural penalties up front today. We got a dead ball, encroachment on the defense. We're going to go half the distance, still be fourth down. Moves the ball down to the three yard line. Does that change your thinking at all as a coach? No. You still kick it? No, still do because it's, you know, it's fourth and goal. Take a look right here, see if, see if anybody moves. Nobody moved. That was a good call by the official. The one thing about this, though, remember, this is a very severe angle at 20 yards. Brady is the holder on the play. And it's what? blocked. It's blocked. I think it was Riendu. I think he's the one that laid out and got a piece of it. There was a surge on the line, and yes, it was, number 25. I got to tell you, Mark, it seems like I'm making this kid a star in the last. <laughs> I'm I keep mentioning his name, but he keeps making plays. First, the big tackle, then, of course, the play on Kirkus. But look what he does here laying out. Just gets a piece of it. And we talked about the fact that it was going to be at a very difficult angle. Now the momentum has changed colors. It's green and white. The NCAA Division II Football Championship is brought to you by Gateway. You've got a friend in the business. Seven to three with 8.50 to play in the third quarter. A tremendous amount of pomp and circumstance and festivities here as the two teams gather here in Florence, Alabama to determine the winner in college football. The champion in Division II, first down and 10 for the University of North Dakota, coming in at 13-1 and one on the season. L.B. Klosterman in the quarterback, hands it off to Perkorevich. Brought down at the 27. Here it was last night, the scene to determine the winner of the Harlan Hill Trophy, the outstanding player in Division II college football. And there's the man that the award is named after, Harlan Hill. Again, individually, have them stand and... The winner, Dusty Bonner. Winning the Harlan Hill and from Valdosta State, former transfer from Kentucky. Had a chance to visit with him in between quarters. Excited young man, and he was going to get a chance to play in the hula ball. Up and down in three, Klosterman keeps it himself. Out near the first down, beyond the 30. Let's go downstairs to Dave Bryan, who's standing by with the guy that took home the hardware last night. That's right. Big award for Dusty Bonner from Valdosta State. Uh, just the second player ever. This year, Johnny Bailey won three in a row at Texas a and to win two straight Harlan Hill Awards. What kind of honor is that for you? It's a huge honor for me, and uh, you know it all goes back to my teammates and coaches, and I'm just really thankful. Todd, a moment ago, mentioned you're going to play in the Hula Bowl, so a chance against the 1A guys. You played Kentucky before. Do you think you got a shot at the NFL? Yeah, I don't know. I think I can uh, definitely go try to play, and I, and I hope to, and I want to, but I just got to go make the most of my opportunities right now. What are your thoughts on watching these two teams today? They're playing very well. The defense is playing strong, and they just uh, just got to keep battling out. Great to see you. Congratulations. All right, thank you. First down and 10 to run the draw to Pukarevich with a gaping hole out near another first down at the 41-yard line. And we should mention that Kurt Ames, the quarterback of Grand Valley State, uh, finishing a close second, I believe. Yeah, the voting, as I understood, it was something like 209, 203. It was awfully close. And, of course, the young man, <laughs> I'm sorry I picked that earlier when you said there are no guarantees for his job. But I said, 49 touchdowns, three interceptions, no guarantees. Come on. No, no, I, mean, I meant getting back <laughs> no, here. No, I, I, yeah, no, no, I knew what you meant. <laughs> but, yeah, it was quite close. But Bonner, back-to-back, -back. congratulations to you. Second down and one. Great play fake. Incomplete behind his intended receiver, Chad Mustard. Mustard earlier dropped one. He was defended that time by Terry Foster. Once again on second and short, they decided to take a shot up the field and it was ineffective as we see Ames there on the, excuse me, 209-201. Oh, well, okay. Still close. Then it was a round. Yeah, no, no, exactly. One, one right. more vote just came in from Florida. Yeah, very close. <laughs> That's right, let's check these chads. I think yeah. it was 203. Still, what a great year that young man has had despite his injury. We really hope that over the next eight months he can come back and be 100%. 
Third down and one. Backs lining up out of the eye this time. And flags down on the field. Kelby Klosterman started off this game with quite the hot hand, but since has cooled off a little bit. I think there might be something substitution-wise. You know, when you saw over on the sidelines, you saw the coaches screaming, and they didn't have enough people, and they didn't have the right people in on the game, and they did it at the last minute, and as a result, that's a gimme, gimme first down. And of course, now that gives them four for 11 on third down conversions, but that, that would fall into the hitting of a large S. Yes. That was a gift. <laughs> Room service. The one thing that these two teams have to get used to, and all the teams do in this playoff format, you never know who your opponent is going to be, Good so point. you deal with consistently the factor of the unknown. One of the maybe excuses for teams not having their rhythm in the abundance of penalties today. First down and 10. Pass complete at the 45-yard line. Folks, don't forget John Saunders, Terry Bowden will be in Times Square Stadium to reveal which teams will battle for the national championship plus all the other bowl championship series matchups. The Tostitos BCS Selection Show, Sunday live at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific time on ABC. And, of course, the one ointment in the fly, what happens if LSU wins? Tonight? Very good point. That's very interesting. Could it be that Nebraska plays for the national title after being third in their conference? That is very interesting. Second down and one. Play fake. Incomplete intended for Graf. No flag on the play. Defended well that time by Darren Smith, number 19, and once again went threatened downfield. The defense for the Lakers coming up with another key play. And, uh, boy, it's something that we've seen happen throughout the course of this game so far. What happens with the missed field goals? Is it, 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 it's a psychological ploy on both sides. On offense, you get frustrated because you're moving between the tackles, but nothing ever comes to fruition. On defense, you feel good about the fact that, hey, you know, okay, we give up a couple first bounce. No problem. We can hang in there. Continually dodging the bullet. Third down and one. Boy, this is going to be close. Not sure that he got there. Stopped up right near. Now he's 45. He's going to be short. He's going to be short. They're marking at the 45, and now a decision for Dale Lennon as to what to do here. They've been so effective on the on the third and shorts, and I'm sure that at this point, that Chris Musman might be second guessing himself. He's become very predictable there on that second and one, going up top every single time. It could come back to bite him now on fourth and very short because they're going for it. Fourth and one, they're calling it with about five and a half minutes to play. One of the maybe early defining moments of the second half here. Stop in motion. Perkarevich falls forward and got the first down at the 44-yard line. That's a great effort by Perkarevich right there. Not only to get the first down, but a trip over that guy and almost whacked it. No, 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 come on, Todd, be serious. <laughs> In all, in all seriousness, you made a very good point in terms of this being a crucible of the game. Perkarevich now follows behind Larson, doesn't get much of a block, and really at the point of attack, he gets whacked, able to spin off of the tackle of Scott Mackey, the strong safety. Jed Perkarevich. And from our vantage point, I thought he got it, but... Mm. I get in trouble when I try and play Nostradamus. He didn't get it. A short... He was short. Boy, he must have hit his knee a lot sooner than where they marked him. Uh, you know what? It's such an inexact science. Yeah. We both know that. I mean, you come in and see that. It appeared to me that his effort did get him actually past the 44-yard line, but the side judge came in, marked a little bit short, and Dale Lennon's not very happy about it. But now his defense is going to have to rise to the occasion, as they have, frankly, all year long. This is a defense, North Dakota's, that has pitched two consecutive shutouts. The two points that the team surrendered last week against UC Davis came the result of a late safety. First down and ten for the Lakers. Spearman. Stopped up after a gain of about three by Josh Burrow. And so now as a result of that carry, he does get over his 2,000 yards for his career. Congratulations, number one. 5'10", junior. Team's leading rusher 
during the regular season. They've been averaging 75 yards per contest. Always important to have a guy like that to help you on the ground in these kind of conditions. Second down and seven. That's backwards. That's a fumble. Yep. That's a fumble. Still live, and the Lakers appear to have recovered it. Hey, let me, let me say, I just watched it. Let me test your memory a little bit. I know that you're a sports guy. Do you remember the first time, the most controversial time that that occurred? I'll give you a hint. It was 1968. And I know you're younger than I am. <laughs> okay. I'd like to get this one. I can, I get a, I'll get a bail you out. Go ahead. Daryl LaMonica oh. threw out to Charlie Smith. Okay, and Charlie Smith just let the ball go just like Lesniak. The Jets recovered, go in for the touchdown. They end up beating the Raiders in the first goal of the Super Bowl three and they win. <laughs> Third down and 14. I think we got a little grainy black and white there to dig up in the truck. Inside the screen. Banks. Out near midfield. Got some of that yardage back out to the 48. And again, we talk about the psychology of the game. Great opportunity for Grand Valley to come in. Hey, all right, we got it. We did this. Let's go down the field instead. North Dakota's defense is uh-uh, three and out. The defense is dictating the tempo and the tenor of the game today. As the Lakers get set to punt once again. Now, remember last time, Last time, Graf had a pretty good return, minus the, the phantom clip. The interesting this time is they try and set up a return or a block. They come after him a little bit. Nice kick. Right. Ah. Graf falling for the fair catch right at the 20-yard line. A 32-yard punt. Nothing on the return. This is the Division II title game, and when we come back, Dave Ryan will have a special guest down on the field. All right, we're joined by a very special guest on the sideline. Actually, a couple special guests. Melinda Vandenberg, who is Eric Vandenberg's wife, starting strong safety for Grand Valley State and one of the equipment managers during the year. It's got to be pretty dramatic for you to watch the game so close to your due date, February 2nd, right? I know it. It hurts. It's just, it pokes me every game. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm really nervous. So we may have a future kicker there. That's possible. Uh, what's that been like? What's that been like? We're actually going to have this play uh, mark in a second here. We'll talk more with Melinda. Wow. Like you said, Dave, could have a, a kicker in there somewhere. <laughs> what if the activity heats up during the game? 7 3, first and 10. North Dakota with the ball. Perkarevich out to the 22, back to Dave. So, Melinda, how difficult was that to organize your wedding in the middle of the football season? The team had just played a game October 7th. You uh, two finally got married. That was, it was very difficult. We still haven't gotten our wedding uh, thank yous out, so I might want to make that shout out. We've been so busy with football and homework and everything. It's just crazy. You're a student also at Grand Valley State. Guys, let's go to the baby here one more time to finish things out. Either Ezekiel or Charlize, depending on a boy or a girl. Right. Uh, what are you saying there, baby? Who's going to win this game? Oh, Rhino, come on. Hey, Dave, if you, can, if you can get that interview, that's a scoop. That's a scoop right there, Dave Ryan. Oh, Good stuff. Man. <laughs> You'll do anything to get someone in front of the mic. Well, he's second and nine. And this one snuffed. By number 14, Mackey once again, the strong safety, making a play. Remember, Mackey was the one that made the play on the fourth down, of which we thought was the first down, but turned out not to be. And, of course, also in on the play is number four, Terry Foster, their undersized linebacker, continues to make plays. And now, once again, the difficulty here, third down conversions of this distance are very, very difficult to bank. And, of course, we've already discussed how problematic it's been for the fighting Sioux today. They come out in one of the formations we've seen a lot of times, and... Two tight ends and two wide outs, single back set. Osterman. Incomplete. His receiver falls, Schlusner falls, but no flag, and it's fourth down, time to punt. And, of course, the timing of that seems appropriate because the man running with him happens to be Eric Vandenberg, the father of that child that Dave interviewed. <laughs> or <laughs> soon to be that. child, yeah, exactly. <laughs> child issuing comments through her mother, of course. Benton into punt, his fourth of the day. That's right, that's right. Your husband made that play, that's what we're talking about. Don't get married during the season, there's a lot going on. Nice punt. Urkus backpedaling at the 25. Looking to make a big play, he lost it. 
There's a flag down back at the 24, but the flag is going to be for holding. A 55-yard punt. Let's wait and see who got this. Now, this is interesting. It's not always... It's North Dakota ball. And the recovery, the recovery was made by David Wisthoff, a reserve, run, reserve running back. But again, Kirkus was not holding the ball safely, trying to make a play. Here he is. He makes the catch, cuts to the outside. Now watch right there. He, he avoids the tackle. Now watch the ball come out. And look, at it just bounces out of his hands. Nobody swatted it. It just came out. And something that I had addressed to you earlier, Mark, at the first half we had discussed, the idea that maybe on a day like this, even though normally he's barehanded, because it's wet, maybe he'd have been better off with gloves. That's easy to second guess, and I'm not, I'm not second guessing a great player like Kirkus, but again, you know, given the circumstances, and especially in a game of right. this magnitude, even on a punt return, why not? First down and 10. North Dakota working at his short field at the 30-yard line. Bergerevich hit at the 26. I'm Mark Jones along with Todd Christensen and Dave Ryan. We're here in Florence, Alabama on the banks of the Tennessee River. The Division II title game, Grand Valley State leading 7-3 right now over North Dakota. Grand Valley State in the green, North Dakota. Check that, Grand Valley State in the white. North Dakota in the green. Second down and six. Grand Valley State trying to protect its unblemished record, 13 and 0 on the season. Berkovic dragged down to the 22 that time by Scott Mackey, the strong safety. Good block in front of him by Matt Knutes and the offensive lineman who led the way for him. Really, it appeared for a moment there that he was going to get around and get the first down. This game is starting to go rapidly, and that bodes well for North Dakota. And I'm saying that not just be, not the fact that they're behind, but this is the pace of the game that Dale Lennon discussed with us. This is what he wanted. Nice little slow dance. <laughs> Third down and one. Nobody over the center. You could sneak it. Using up time on the play clock. But the Remix met wow. right in the hole of the 20. Wow. And Clarence Lindsay. But from my vantage point, the one side judge had him across the 20, and one side judge just has him on the other side of the 20. So we'll go to the other side of the field at the end of the third quarter and decide which guy was right. And what would Kurt Ames do to be able to play in this game to help his team to victory? You'll have to wait till next season. 7 3, final quarter when we come back. Let's go back to 1999, and what a thrilling game that was. Carson Newman against Northwest Missouri State. A high-scoring game? You betcha. 52-52 going into overtime, and then Carson Newman lost in the championship game for the third time in four years. Yeah, it went four overtimes. Northwest rallied from a 44-29 deficit to tie and then forced the overtime and going to win it 58 to 52. That's kind of what we thought about this game, yeah. Todd, coming in. We were wrong. First down and 10. Wasserman keeps it himself. Down at the 12-yard line. Very impressed there with Perkarevich there with a lead block. Normally your tailback isn't much of a block, but you get a chance to see game track. Let's take a look at our game track. And Wasserman running the ball moments ago. Has cooled off since opening really well, I guess. And three turnovers. But to their advantage, they haven't necessarily turned them into points. And, of course, on fourth and one, they were able to hold on that crucial series near midfield. Now the defense here, second and two, just has to be thinking the same thing. Force a field goal, force a field goal, force a field goal. Yeah, that's really a bit of big strategy there. Yep. It's worked. Yep. Down to the 10-yard, Perkerevich. Tackled by Vanderberg. 
One of the things that North Dakota, and one of the reasons why they haven't been as effective in the second half running is this. They continue to go with a two tight end offense, and while they are powerful and they push people around, the reality is, Mark, is that bunches everybody in. One of the things that they should do and think about is go to a three or four wide receiver set, but continue to run the ball. That takes away your Spread run support. Out. Exactly, because that's the way Grand Valley State has been able to run as effectively as they have in taking away the run support people in the secondary. Interesting strategies. Short yarded situation. Well, all he needed to do is to get to the 10, and it appears that he got across the 10, so that'll be a first down. Now, <clears throat> Mark, the hardest yards, in my opinion, the most difficult thing is to be first and goal at the nine. Those <laughs> yards are just impossible to get because you can't get the first down, but you know with the short field, you're limited in what you can do. It's a long nine most times, and they will bring the sticks and measure them. Just make sure. And it is the first down and goal from just inside the 10 yard line. We saw head coach Brian Kelly well clothed, keeping warm on the other side of the field. Meanwhile, Dale Lennon, his counterpart in his third year at North Dakota, wearing a short sleeve. And keep in mind, it's a team and program used to working in uh, inclement weather. That's right. In severe weather. You saw Cameron Paterka on the sideline. He does not want to come into this situation kick a field goal. He wants to come in and kick an extra point. I guarantee you. He's one of four on the day. North Dakota nearly doubling the amount of first downs of their opponents. Great save. Great save. He sold it. Touchdown. What a two. great save. Kelby Klosterman with his 11th touchdown of the postseason. And I got to tell you, I was critical earlier of Chris Musman in some of his play calling earlier, but this is a great play. As we talked about, first and goal at the nine, what do you do if you throw? Oh, nuts for second nine. Now we've got to throw again. If you run and you don't get any yardage, what do you do? Take a look at the, he put, puts it under his hand. Now here comes reverse. You know it's on the reverse. He doesn't have the ball, does he? Does he? Yes, he does. That, folks, is what you call the old-fashioned bootleg. He had that <laughs> on his leg. Great job by Klosterman. And Paterka now in for the extra point. Knocks it through. And for quarterback Kelby Klosterman, wow, it was an education in prestidigitation. A little trickery. We'll be right back. Just a terrific call, and as you pointed out, Mario, a great job of ball handling. Luke, Sch Luke Schlusner is the one who comes in motion. Now, everybody thinks this is a reverse. Now, you stop it right here. Watch all the white shirts. Look at the white shirts. Everybody is thinking reverse. They're going in this direction. Everybody has to look and go. Now, watch the white shirts pursue. Now, Klosterman has the ball on his hip and nothing but green grass in front of him. That is just an excellent call because after all the plays that they've done straight ahead, Mark, as soon as you fake go to the reverse, that's got to be what it is, right? It's got to be. Up, yeah. Chris Musman really setting that one up. And they squib it. The Lakers bouncing on it at the 33. Now, wh what's the thinking behind that? I don't understand that at all because Paterka has such a great leg. Take a look at that graphic. That is astounding. It just goes to show that you can never predict, particularly in college football, because like you, Mark, I thought, this is going to be fun. It's going to be one of those, na 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 down the field, down the field, 42-41. Instead, 10-7 to a defensive start. And that's why a lot of times it's best to take it out of the hands of statistics, man, and yep. computers and put the teams on the field, make them play. Yep, amen. Ryan Brady in a quarterback. First down and 10 for Grand Valley State. They trail by a field goal. Brady on the option. Got a block. He's out to the 39-yard line. Keep in mind that the last time the Lakers would have had the ball, Kirk has fumbled it on that punt, and it led to the first points off a turnover today for their opponents, North Dakota. Well, again, you know what? In fairness to that defense for Grand Valley, Yes, they gave up a touchdown, but again, three turnovers. Two of them did not turn into points, and so you just can't keep turning the ball over and in. Second down and four. And flags down on the field. 
not sure these teams have played in the game so far in the postseason with this many combined penalties. You might be right. Approaching double that digits. Big ball, false start, only offense, five yards, the free second down. Folks, don't forget the College Game Day Bowl Selection Show comes your way on ESPN Sunday at 6 Eastern Time, 3 Pacific. Grace Davis, Rod Gilmore, Mark May break down all the bowl matchups. See where your favorite team ends up. More information, log on to ESPN.com. Second down and nine right now. From the 34. Grand Valley State led most of the ball game, but trail now. Intended for Kirkus. And he's drawn a lot of attention. Well, Dan Vaughn, defensive tackle for Grand Valley State, sums up that last series for his team. Finally, he takes a look and he's frustrated over the fact that, you know what, we've done so well up to this point. I mean, you know, and, and they have, frankly, they have. But you know what, the third turnover ends up being the charm for North Dakota. And let me make a comment with regards to Kirkus. His relationship with Brady, how can he have much of a relationship with him throughout the season has been thrown with Ames almost the entire time. Right, it's funny. We saw he and Ames hanging out a lot right. in the hotel lobby. You see the chemistry between them on and off the field. Third down and nine. Incomplete. And Wojciechowski fires over the head of his intended target. This is why a, a seemingly innocuous penalty like motion for a team now like Grand Valley is huge because your quarterback is a running quarterback. He doesn't come up with big chunks of yardage in terms of throwing the ball downfield. And so as a result, they could not get that third down conversion. And Ains has to be thinking to himself, man, if I'd have been in there, I'd have run this. I'd have had him on the slant. I'd have had him on the skinny post. Had him on a corner. Had him on a comeback. You know? How impatient does he yep. look on the sidelines? Six point of the day coming up, meanwhile, for Grand Valley State, Matt Williams. Revich with 95 yards rushing. Fourth down and nine. Another bad snap. It came after him. Graff watches it bounce and feels it at the 20. Got a great block at the 25. That's a great tackle. That is a great tackle in the open field by Clarence Lindsay. And it just goes to show you, we notice we see the blocks by Eric Schmidt, the tackle by Lindsay open field. When you're at the Division II level, your stars play on special teams. 49 yards of the punt, 13 on the return. GVSU, they trail when we come back. Dan Graff came very close to having one go the distance. He takes it on the hop. Take a look at the middle of the field. Now he cuts back against the green. Watch number 40, Eric Schmidt. Pow! He gets that first block. Now as he cuts to the outside, he's waiting on Jake Nordic. He gets one more block. If he can get Lindsey down right there, but he can't because he's going to clip him. The result is he's tripped up at the 31-yard line. Otherwise, they could have had a very, very big play. I find it interesting that Lindsey, what a terrific player. The leading tackler coming into this game with 96 tackles, still playing all the special teams. First down and 10 for North Dakota at their own 30-yard line. Berkarevich. Knocked down right near the line of scrimmage by Lindsay, the guy you were talking about just a few moments ago. And Todd, I mentioned during the break, when was the last time that Grand Valley Back State trailed at this late juncture of the ball game? A team that on the course of the season averages over 53 points a game, often looking at blowouts late. Very, very cogent thought, Mark, and I, I, I posed that question to Brian Kelly if it became competitive because of the fact that they've had eight different games in which they're leading by 40 or more at halftime and how they were responding to competitive game. But remember, two playoff games ago, Saginaw Valley State, a 33-30 game. I think that should help them in this game. Second down and 10. They have 10.53 to work with. Fosterman on the move. Brought down to the 33. It'll be third down at about six to go. Klosterman just does not seem to have the savvy as a runner as his counterpart Brady. It looked to me like he had a good seven to eight yards, but he hesitates, can't quite decide. He's got his tight end out in front of him and, and Kivig to lead the way, but instead he just is a little bit indecisive and he gets dropped. And now this is a third and long, which clearly North Dakota has not been very successful in converting. Well, Klosterman, we're told by the coaches, has a lot of options at the line of scrimmage and has a propensity to use a lot of the play clock and with 10 minutes to go as we approach that mark now that could become an ally of theirs or a benefit to theirs <laughs> a 
Osterman. Right at the first down marker at the 41 yard line, tackled by Vaughn. Maybe and it's the first down, Todd. And maybe he'd have got a little bit more yardage if not for the official. Fades back has good protection. Cuts right up the middle now. I mentioned, now what? Watch the cutback. That's excellent. As he's banged down, he ends up with the first. Lindsay points back and isn't quite so sure, but they do give him the first. 140 yards of rushing to eight in the second period, the second half, pardon me, for North Dakota. They've dominated on the ground. First down and 10, just beyond the 40-yard line for North Dakota. Uh, Larson blazing for the first down is Blaze Larson. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I had to. At the 44. Once again, the offensive line for North Dakota creates the opening. Watch the left side of the offensive line, and there's the gap. And again, for being 6'5", 250, he's fairly agile. And again, one of the difficulties of when you try and tackle the ball like that, that's when you have the arm tackles that a 6'5", 247-pound fullback can break through. And move the chains again. Blaze Larson, a 6'5", 247-pound senior. Kind of a late-season bonus, the coaches say, for North Dakota, someone that really didn't factor into their plans during the course of the regular season and up until late and now in the playoffs has done very well. Well, he has. You know, he's only had 57 carries on the year, but for 363 yards, that averages out to 6'4 a carry. And if I've got somebody at 6'4 a carry, i got to get him some touches. No doubt. 163 yards rushing now for North Dakota. And again, I just find it interesting that as we peruse those Nintendo numbers prior to this game, <laughs> And I said, and I remember actually saying to the coach, this isn't going to be one of those 10-7 games, you know. And of course, I couldn't have it. So very wonderful. First down and 10. I run the fullback again, Larson. Beyond the 40 to the 39-yard line. Tackled by Vandenberg. Going with the misdirection, lining him up to one side, and then he cuts back against the grain. And again, it's, you have to figure at this point, after the turnovers and the emotion <clears throat> that has been engendered by the defense for Grand Valley State, that, Mark, they got to be a little bit fatigued. At this late point in the game, you would think it would be a factor. Second down and five. Two seconds on the play clock, and they snap it. Larson brought down at the 39-yard line. Well, number eight BYU, what a story they could tell when the season's over. They take on one of their rivals, 13-0. They take on Hawaii. Todd, that game coming up a little bit later today on ESPN2. Your thoughts on that? Well, I think that could be 50-50. One of the difficulties of playing in Hawaii is that, is that, you know what, you go over there and you've got to get it out of your head, <laughs> right? But it's not a vacation. What distress? As hard as, yeah, exactly. What yeah. palm trees? Yeah. What beach? And let's not forget, Hawaii, you mentioned the great wide receiver, Ashley Lele. They're 8-3 this year. And remember, they did beat Fresno State in a big upset. They're down in five. And Drew Rose did a great job over there. Possibly keeps it himself. And his rock nice at the 36. Scott Mackey brought bad intentions with that tackle. Along with Mackey was James Barnes, because from my vantage point, I thought he was going to get it. it. Looked like he had his mom momentum heading across the 35-yard line and said, Barnes says, I don't think so. And right now in that ball game, that we mentioned just a few moments ago, BYU trailing 14 to three with less than two minutes to go in the first. Fourth down and two. Now you see Brian Kelly with the incompletion. What he's doing there is he's keeping his defense on the field. He's not even trying to get in a punt return. He just wants them to be safe to protect against the fake. Off the side of his, off the side of his foot. He's done that many times today. Only at the 20 yard line. You would think he would get it a little further down the field, but with 6.20 to play in the fourth quarter, a 16 yard punt for Brady and Wojciechowski. It's time to give it the program for the Lakers. 
6.20 left, fourth quarter, NCAA Division II National Championship game. Moments ago, Todd Wojciechowski getting advice from injured star quarterback Kurt Ains of Grand Valley State. Kurt now with us. I know it's frustrating he can't begin the game, but you talked to Todd moments ago. What'd you tell him? I just told him to stick with it. You know, you know, the best of us make mistakes, and uh, you know he's young and he's got to get through it. And he's got to he's got to come up with a big win for this team. He's got to make plays. Well, there's a play right there. Out to Kirkus at the 28. Let's go back to Dave. You know this offense better than anybody. I've not scored a point in the second half. Dave Kirkus had the the tough drop punt that led to the North Dakota touchdown. What does the offense have to do to turn it around here? I think they got to keep doing what they're doing. Um, we're moving the ball well. We got to, you know, keep establishing the running game, get uh, Scrimmon and Lesniak going, and uh, we got to get a touch to Kirkus. We got to get him. We got to hit him downfield, and uh, we're going to take a couple shots here and uh, try and get him the ball. Mark. All right, Dave. 32 touchdowns on the year for Kirkus. None today. Spearman with a gaping hole. Tackled at the 45 and another Laker first down. Riondo with the tackle. But again, the pass loosened things up. With 538 remaining, of course, the assumption is, you know what, they can't just run down the field. They're going to have to shake it up and do something else. They're loosened up from the pass. The result is Spearman able to cut back on the drop play for a huge play out to the 45. Ojahowski in at quarterback right now. Brady watching from the sidelines. 9 of 20 thus far for Ojahowski. Mark. That one into the line. That was Spearman again going between the tackles. Not by Halverson, Halverson on the play. I'm trying to look ahead for you at home. I'm thinking that this has got to be an awful lot of pressure on Sontag. We're, in mid, we're close to midfield, and I know maybe I'm just getting way, way ahead of myself, but remember the youngsters, 5 of 10 on the season right. with a long of only 31. Had one blocked earlier in the second half. A great effort by Riondo. They do have to get it to Kirkus at some point. They've got to give it up and get the ball to number 80. And look his way. Ojahowski escaping harm's way and throwing it out of bounds. Alverson applying the pressure on the play. What? Brian Kelly is saying, "Keep your eyes open." And part of the part of the problem there is because he looked, he had only eyes for Kirkus in that situation. There were some other people in the middle of the field he was looking for. Don't forget, coming up next, it's the 2001 Wendy's High School Heisman presentation. Third down and ten for Grand Valley State U. Five of twelve in third down situations today. North Dakota came with a blitz. With the tackle. What a play by number five, Banks. Terrence Banks got the first down. One of the things about the bubble screen, and that's what that's what it's called now in contemporary football, is the ability to make the first guy miss. If you make the first guy miss, then you've got to play. Here, Banks comes back against the grain, and he makes the first man miss with the help of his friends. That was Tom Irvin that could not come up with it. Cuts back against some of the green shirts and gets a first down at the 41. Taking some of the pressure off of Kirkus in the process. Wojciechowski has a lot of room. Wojciechowski tackled at the 28-yard line by O'Neal, the free safety and a late flag might be a face mask. Well, I'm not so sure about that. The reason I say that is because it looked like he had him from the back. And I don't know if his hands were able to come across the face. Or, well, that's, that's what they saw. Probably, probably not so. Well, I mean, the way he the way he fell down, it looked that way. Right. We'll get a chance to, to, to see it up close. Now he sees the opening. It's a good decision to run. Now here comes O'Neal in pursuit. Watch the left hand as it come across his mask. Oh, it does indeed. Good call by the official. I thought he had the shoulder pad, but no, he did have the mask. Good call. The Grand Valley State's case, better late than never on the call. But you know what, Todd? You watch Wojciechowski run, and when he makes his mind up to scramble, right. he does a pretty good job. Now, having said that, though, he is out now, and Brady's back in. First down and 10. Brady keeps it after faking the handoff to Spearman down to the 21-yard line. Under four minutes to play in the fourth quarter here. I'm Mark Jones along with Todd Christensen and Dave Ryan. This is the Division II title game from Florence, Alabama. With 3.42 to go. Grand Valley State driving, looking to go ahead. And 
Stone Valley State led for most of the game, but North Dakota took the lead in the last period. Second down and nine. Into the end zone. Incomplete. Kirkus looks like he had an opportunity to make a play. Dustin Thornburg, though, was not biting. They decided that's a long ways to throw that fade route. And, of course, as we mentioned before, with the relationship that he has with him, not much. You can see that he tries to get the arm out in front. He should have concentrated on trying to get to the ball. Instead, he's trying to draw an interference penalty. But Thornburg with him strike for strike, and he does the right thing, looks back at the quarterback. Third down and nine now. Looking one way and one way only to Kirkus. Stopped up at the 12-yard line. But he's going to have the first down, and they had exactly what they wanted. I was very surprised that they're going to blitz in that situation. They really should have given Thornburg some help. But what they saw is that Thornburg was way, way off. Thornburg comes up and makes the tackle, but they're going to have the first down here on about the 13-yard line. And I'll be interested here on, in the calls as to whether or not they're content just to maybe settle for the field goal or go all the way in. Brady back in at quarterback now, Todd, on first down and 10. Both quarterbacks have pretty much shared snaps today. Brady keeps it. He's going to go. Touchdown, Lakers. They take the lead. What I was talking about, Mark, when I stated the obvious, which is, of course, they wanted to get into the end zone and score a touchdown, but the calls, were they going to throw the ball up? Were they going to be content to go off tackle? Instead, they go with what has been so effective, and that's Brady running the football. They call the quarterback draw. He goes up the middle. It's completely vacated. Touchdown, Laker. His second touchdown of the ball game, and Kurt Ains, after some good tutoring on the sidelines, with both him and Wojo, watches the touchdown run. But again, the blocking at the point of attack is outstanding. And when you go in from 12 yards out, standing up, that says a lot about the fact that your friends are getting the job done. Important extra point. Sontag knocks it through, and Grand Valley State undefeated in 14, 13 games this year, looking for number 14. They have the lead, but plenty of football remaining for North Dakota when we come back. Under the bright lights of Brawley Stadium in Florence, Alabama, the fans cheering, fans all the way from Michigan, from North Dakota, from Allendale, Michigan, from Grand Forks, North Dakota. Their purity and their ambitions captured here on the football field today. They're playing for a national title. Kurt Ames, the injured quarterback for Grand Valley State on the right, and his understudy, Ryan Brady, running for a touchdown moments ago, his second of the game to give them the lead over this man's team, North Dakota. Dale Lennon in his third year as head coach. Over 107 years of North Dakota football. They have never won a national title. They seek their first as they will get possession of the ball starting from their own 20-yard line. First down and 10 for the Fighting Sioux. Wojciechowski and Brady will take a knee and watch anxiously from the sideline. Kelby Klosterman in a quarterback. He's gone the distance for North Dakota, but his passing statistics do not impress. He's 6 of 22. But of course, now, now this gives him a chance to get some rhythm. And I'm surprised here as they come out with their two tight end set with 242 remaining. Yes, they can still run the ball a little bit, but he's going to have to get the ball up the field. 242 to go in the fourth period. Klosterman. Incomplete, intended for Graf. And Barnes almost had a pick in the process. I I'm surprised that they haven't come out with a three or four wide receiver set here. I mean, who are you fooling? They've got to get the ball up the field. Come on, ball, come to me, he said. Hey. <laughs> Barnes has had a very good game. Remember that this is this is a very good cornerback from, from Berkeley. Berkeley, California. What are you doing out in Allendale, Michigan? He likes yep. the climate. But he has made some good plays. Six interceptions on the season, 17 pass breakups to lead the team. He's the way that matches up against the opposing best receiver. Second down and 10. Possible with time. Incomplete. 
should have been caught by Jesse Smith, and it's third and ten. Should have been caught, but in fairness to him, that ball was thrown a little bit behind him, and I'm thinking now with 2.31 remaining, Mark, this is four-down territory. 13-1 and one on the season. Trying to stay alive. University of North Dakota. Third down and ten from their own 20. Herschel Revich in the backfield. Three receiver formation. Draft to the top of your screen. Boston escapes, but he'll be short of the first down by about three yards. Hawkins making the stop. But that's okay. Instead of throwing the ball downfield for an incompletion hanging in the pocket, he did the right thing and to run up the field. And now with the clock remaining, the debate is to whether or not to use the timeout, and they decide to right there. North Dakota uses its first timeout of the half. They have two remaining. Time to press the right buttons for Dale Lennon. They trail when we come back. 14-10, Lakers over the Fighting Sioux with 2-10 to play in the ball game. And folks, don't forget, tonight on ESPN2, a double dip of college hoops. North Carolina State taking on Preston Shumpert at number nine, Syracuse from the Dome. And then Villanova takes on Temple in a battle of Philadelphia at 8 Eastern time, 5 Pacific. You know play I like here, 4th and 2, an option. Possibly they run an option? Yeah, why not? Got to get to the 30-yard line. Bossman's going to take it himself. And he got the first down. Bob keeps running. Now they'll stop it while they move the chains. With 2.03 to go. Get as many blockers in front as you can, and that's exactly what happened. Key block to the outside was by Jesse Smith, a wide receiver who was able to drop the strong safety. He's been struggling catching the ball, but he had a big block there. Get a first down for the fighting suit. A field goal will not do. They trail by four. Make substitutions for the Lakers. First down and ten for North Dakota. They come on a blitz. They had the right call. Perkovic brought down well in the open field at the 41 by Mackey. And Perkarevich needed one more step to get out of bounds because he was indeed tackled in bounds, even though he rolled out. Good hustle on the part of Mackey, who is a sprint champion in the conference up there in the 100 meters. North Dakota with two timeouts remaining. Another thing, another thing, Mark, when you win games as decisive, these two teams are win. They're not used to moving with alacrity in terms of the two minutes. Bro. Osterman. Incomplete at midfield, intended for Schluster. Actually, that's a blessing. It really is. Because if he catches that ball, yes, it's a first down, but then they bleed off another 15 seconds off the clock in terms of moving the sticks and huddling and everything else. So now the clock stops. With, and, because, and I say that because it's four down territory. Third down and four. Need to be in the huddle at this point and calling two plays, Mark. Four receiver set. Rosterman under pressure. And brought down at the 41-yard line by number 91, Dan Vaughn. They've got to call their second time out here. And again, that falls into the heading of coverage sack because he had a good four and a half to five seconds to get the ball downfield. The Lakers have shown a propensity here on the last drive to bring a little pressure. And Notre Dame, North Dakota, I'm looking at the logo. North Dakota calls the second time out. Let's go down stare at Dave. All right, guys, this is the name tag for Eric Schmidt, the linebacker for North Dakota. It says the North Dakota fighting Sioux on it, but the original name tags given to them by the folks here in Florence said the North Dakota State fighting Sioux. Kind of a lack of respect for North Dakota and their arch rivals from Fargo, about 70 miles to the northeast, who have won five NCAA Division II championships. The guys really try to forget the name of North Dakota State and make their own history today for the first time in their school history to win a national championship. They want North Dakota to be remembered more than State after this game today. 
Well, now the onus, excuse me, go ahead, Mark. Certainly has been a rallying point for them during the course of the last few days. What I was about to say with regards to Klosterman is this. I mentioned last time they should have had two plays called. Now they're going to need to because even if they do get the first down, the clock is going to start to bleed itself and they need to be in a position to bounce up and be ready to go. They have to go for the, they have to get a touchdown on this. The field goal does them no good. So two plays should have been called in the huddle. Fourth down and four. They've got to get to the 45 yard line. Lakers show a blitz. Rapid motion. The defining point of the game for North Dakota, and they convert. Schluster still up. What a great block by Smith. He's right down, down at the one-yard line. line. One yard short, 58 yards in all. And we talked about Jesse Smith. We talked about Jesse Smith, the struggles that he had been having in catching the ball. He comes downfield, and it's an absolutely huge block to enable Schluster to get down the field. You live with the blitz, you die with the blitz, and that's what happens. He cuts back to the middle of the field. Now watch the left of your screen. Number two is gonna come in there. He's gonna drop Mackey. That enables Schluster to get to the outside, and even though he's hustling, Graf can't quite get it. It becomes a game-saving tackle by number 48. That's Eric Vandenberg. He came a long way, first and goal for the Fighting Sioux. On the brink of taking the lead, and perhaps a national championship. Perkarevich, touchdown! What a turn of events. What a turn of events. I I'm telling you right now, my fourth and five, they come with the blitz. I'm thinking they're not going to get it. Instead, Schluster makes the catch. Smith gets a block. He goes down the field. Wow. Ains, wow. Ains telling his quarterback buddies this isn't over. But of course, everybody has jammed in to stop him, and Perker Evans does a nice job, uses his vision, gets to the outside. There's no contain. Easy touchdown for number 37. He's run 26 times for a total of 96 yards. And with 29 seconds to play, North Dakota takes the lead. Now, as you pointed out, Mark, you're absolutely right. And if for whatever reason, Paterka decides that he wants to go with the squid kick, which I think at this point would make no sense. Is he happy? They still have a shot at, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, why not? Why not? You know, he's, he's, he's got nearly 100, or he's over 100 yards rushing. He's been tremendous. And of course, that old line has created some gaps for him. And of course, you know, the philosopher once said that the purpose of life was to maximize your emotional income. Well, this has certainly been the yin and yang. If you talked to me, what, Mark, two minutes ago? Yeah. You're thinking the Grand Valley State is set for a celebration. Instead, it turns around completely. It's North Dakota, folks, not North Dakota State. They are making their own stamp on the college football world right here, right now. And I tell you what, they're going to want to have Dave. They're going to want to have Dave Ryan as their mascot because right when he makes that report, right, <laughs> certainly it turns around and Klosterman, who's been so ineffective, delivers the ball right on the money. And Schlesner does the rest, as if on cue. Grand Valley State University, though, trying to rally one another on the sidelines. Ojahowski, their quarterback, set to take the reins of the offense on this perhaps final drive of the ball game. He's 9 of 19 passing, 103 yards total. And a look at some of the despair on the sidelines for the defense of Grand Valley State. It's time to lift themselves up if they hope to win this game. His teammate Jerome Knox is telling him that very thing. Short kick, Lesniak. Oh my goodness. Flag down on the play, Lesniak still up. Wow. Lesniak, what a tough. Down down the the but the flag is down at the 30, and I think that's going to bring it back. I have not, I have not seen a tackle like that by a kicker <laughs> since Darren Bennett dropped. I can't remember the name of the Pittsburgh <laughs> receiver. A 48-yard return. Wow, what a shame. Which might have been Todd. Oh, I'm telling you. Boy, I tell you that Lesniak's excited. He's got some quick feet. On the return, we have holding on the receiving team. We're pin last 10 yards from the spot. First down.
take one more look and find out where the penalty came. Right there, there, that's where it comes out. Holding just a little bit, it appears. I think that might have been Taron Banks. Well, that was, gee, Mark, that's close. Ooh. Ooh. Close. <laughs> no Jahowski at a quarterback. He's a guy that can sling a little better on first down and 10. Incomplete. Intended for Banks. Thornburg providing the coverage. You saw Third. Banks point back. I'm sorry. You saw Banks point back to the inside. He said, I needed it over that shoulder because that's where I had him shielded. Throw it to the post, not over my back shoulder. But you know what? Easy to say when you're downfield as opposed to when you have five guys in your face as a quarterback. Sure, Todd. And Fredanes watching with angst from the sideline. Second down and ten. It's out of his hands right now. And in the hands of Wojciechowski. The screen. Banks. And a flag down. That'll be a block in the back. With four seconds to go. Spearman, that, that boy. Flags came from all over. Hits Eric Schmidt right between the four and the zero. With four seconds to go, Grand Valley State University's unblemished, undefeated season hanging in the balance right now on the brink of blowing up in smoke. North Dakota would be the first team to defeat them in 20 tries. They're four seconds away. Look at some of the fans that made the trip wow. from Allendale, Michigan. Ten miles outside of Grand Rapids. I tell you what, this has really been exciting. And one of the things that I need, you need to point out here, Mark, is that usually in Division II games or in some of the divisions below Division I, it's a sloppy, not well-played, fumbles, penalties, all sorts of things. I've been very impressed with the fact that there has been a minimum of mental errors. Right. You know? Right. And that both teams have been so highly competitive. You know, there have been plenty of times where each side could have said, forget it, you know, I'm giving up. Just battle right down to the wire. This has been terrific. Really, really good drama. Good theater today. There's been a certain purity about the way that both these teams and their coaching staffs approach the game here. Well, the reality is, is the appreciation for, for it. For most of the seniors, if not all, this is their last football game. They're not going on to riches and being a first-round pick and that sort of thing. This game is monumental for them. On the other side of the field for North Dakota, there are 17 of those such seniors that you talk about. Playing in, like you said, maybe their final game. And with 17 seniors, you have smarts, you have leadership, you have temerity, you have toughness. The type of toughness that can bring them back from the brinks of defeat. Three seconds to go. It's complete to Lesniak. They need to start lateraling, and they don't. It's over. North Dakota are the 2001 Division II champs. I think we need to mention here, we talked about trying to put the specter of North Dakota State behind them. Dale Lennon, the head coach, pointed out to us that Fighting Sioux football has existed for more than 100 years. And so you see the magnitude of this celebration. That's a century's worth of pent-up emotion right there at midfield of Brawley Stadium. It is flowing right now. Let's go downstairs to Dave with the winning coach. All right, I guess the mustache has got to come off. 107 years of fighting suit football. You finally have a national championship. Can you put the emotions into words right now, Dale? You know, I really can't. Uh, it's very special. The guys just never gave up, and we found a way to win. On fourth and four, do you think there was any chance that whole play was going to go all the way to the one-yard line? Well, it was just one of those things. We told the guys never give up. I told Calby, go out there, have some fun, and let's score, and he basically did it. Congratulations. Thank you. A party started in Grand Forks, North Dakota right now, Mark. Yeah, it's 16 degrees up there, but it's starting to heat up very quickly. The final score once again from Florence, Alabama, 17-14 to 14 for North Dakota. Coming up next, 2000 and Wendy's, 2001 Wendy's High School Heisman presentation. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football and on the Internet.
Well, it took a while for the party to get started, but it ended with an exclamation point. For Dave Ryan and Todd Christensen, I'm Mark Jones saying so long from Florence. Out of the way we battled here, um, undermanned, kids showed no quit. I mean, I'll lose with this football team any day. It wasn't from a lack of effort, and it certainly wasn't a lack of heart. It just wasn't Grand Valley's day. The Lakers' dream of holding up the Division II championship trophy was foiled in the last minute by the Fighting Sioux from North Dakota. Take a look at the highlights of this ball game. What a thriller it was. Brian Kelly takes his team into Florence, Alabama to play for the national title, and they take the lead early. Ryan Brady, the option, 7-0 GVSU. Fourth quarter now, Kelby Klosterman, the North Dakota quarterback. That's a bootleg. Great job of hiding the ball. Waltz into the end zone, 14-10-7 North Dakota. Grand Valley comes back, though. Brady calls his own number, 12 yards. 14-10 Lakers. Now's the key play. Fourth and four. Klosterman to Luke Schlusner. The completion breaks a tackle. 58 yards down to the one-yard line. And that sets up the game-winning score on the very next play. Jed Perkowitz. He gets in. 17-14. Grand Valley falls for more in the game. Here's Jason Terzis from Florence. Just when it looked like victory in a national championship was well within their grasp, the unthinkable happens. A huge play on fourth down and four by North Dakota all the way down to the one yard line. They punch it in from there, ball game over. That was disappointing that, uh, you know, it's going to linger, but it's going to obviously put Grand Valley in a position that they've, um, uh, they now are respected nationally. North Dakota did a great job of keeping the Poen Laker offense out of the end zone. Only one touchdown through three and a half quarters. This for a team that scored more than 30 points in each of its previous 13 games. Yeah, we struggled a little bit in the first half. Uh, I thought our offensive line did a good job, and uh, we moved the ball and were effective, and just didn't capitalize on the red zone when we needed to. Then with just over six minutes to go, GVSU came to life. A quick pass to David Kirkus. A pass to Terrence Banks on a third and ten. Another pass to Kirkus on a third and eight. Then, Pater, Ryan Brady taking it in from 12 yards out. You know, after we scored on that drive, it was you know it was a great feeling. We, you know, we were lying on our defense all game long, and they've been shut. They were shutting them down, and you know we had we had strong feelings about shutting them down and getting the ball back to just kneel on the you know kneel on the ball and you know let the clock run out. With the Grand Valley faithful sensing victory, it happened. North Dakota down to its last chance. Kelby Klosterman hooking up with Luke Schlusner, all the way down to the one yard line. Next play, the Sioux take it in. You know, it was, for some reason, it wasn't meant to be this year. You know, yeah. Um, I don't know how else you could put it, but uh, you know I can guarantee you we're going to be back here next year. We left it out there. We did whatever we could, and our motto all year has been whatever it takes, and we fought our butts off. With the Lakers in Florence, Alabama, Jason Terzis, News 8 Sports.